uh, if you email him and say, "Hey, man, how's it been going?" He'll he'll send you back like a paragraph <laughs> that's this big, but he'll send it back to you in like three minutes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He'll just like blah, 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 and this and that, and then I was and you're like you're like, "Holy crap! I I don't have time to read that." <laughs> exactly. I don't even have time to know what it is that you're doing, bro. I just need to hear it good or bad. Right. So I need a binary right now. <laughs> yeah, but but some people are like that. You know, they they're just pro prolific and they can they can bang it out and it doesn't take them all that long. If I had to, you know, in some I have to create an email that's that long. You know, it takes me forty five minutes because I got to figure out what I want to say and did I put it in the right order and did I forget anything and I got to proofread it. No. <laughs> Right. And meantime, you're getting like 20 IMs. You got three emails while you're writing that email. You're working on another project. Yeah. Yeah. But we talked about this last week about developers that we follow. And uh, yeah, there was one guy I forgot to mention. I had to pull his name up again. But he, 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 he uh, um, I almost said blogs, but he, he updates all the time from Google Plus. And it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, like he takes pictures of his dog, which he likes, which his dog's got like this goofy face. So it's kind of funny. And, okay. uh, but he, but he always, um, journaling uh, game ideas, you know, in like an actual physical paper, and he takes pictures of them, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then he's always writing stuff up and and shoot, you know, shooting videos and, and things like that that he's he's doing as part of his game development process, and it's and it's really good stuff, and he's one of the few people that I'm still, um, you know, I still check in on on Google Plus because, like I said, everything else is a ghost town, which is so crazy to think about. Right, right. Okay, so we've got Michael's here and Rob's here. If you guys, if you guys see somebody show up and I don't see them, let, let me know. They're singing a cappella to Stained right now. It's Fred Durst. He's holding his lighters up. <laughs> I don't even know I'm what that is, bro. Right? Yeah, outside. Oh, good. Okay. I'm looking in. Oh, man. Dude. That came out right when I was in college. That's how old I am. I'm an old ass man. And that song was huge. For whatever reason, I don't really know why. I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't like it because it was definitely tight. Yeah. yeah you you see Ed and you see Ed and Mike, or not Ed? Sorry, you see Jason and Mike, Charles. Uh, what? Yeah. I think I think Rob, I'm on oh, there. Is Jason. Yeah, Rob, yeah, my Rob, camera's time. not working, so I'm yeah. gonna need to. Uh, this is a this is a laptop I keep in a bag, and I keep it on and and sleep. And, does this sometimes. So I'm going to reboot and I'm going to join back in a couple of minutes. Okay. We'll be here. Is that right. over there enjoying a nice Pinot, Pinot Noir? <laughs> Is that what you got over there? It's a nice burgundy? <laughs> it's, You're a, uh, it's a red blend. Yeah. <laughs> it's a man of shove it. It's a cab uh, Pinot. <laughs> At first I thought his camera was wobbly and then I just realized it was him. <laughs> nope. That's right. <laughs> Teetering. Uh. Oh, so you can only stuff. hide that next time if you like. <laughs> we all have to decide on what to drink, but it, it can't be anything pretentious. We need to like go down and get like rot wine gut. Wine is not pretentious, man. That's a, no, I'm not saying that wine is pretentious. I'm saying I don't want to. I don't want to get like in. You know, I don't want to get micro brews or any of that horse shit. Like we're broke. What? We're broke developers. We need to get. You know, exactly. I'm we need in to get, Oregon. It's all micro brews in Oregon. Oh no way, dude! You got to get some yellowtail. Maybe we can go get some. Uh, Get some Mad Dog. You know what I mean? We can get the blueberry flavor. I think somebody here is a Mad Dog. <laughs> blueberry flavor. <laughs> Rabbit Dog over here. Let's you guys ever it. drink? You ever Hot drink wine or something like that? What's exactly, that? dude? We gotta get some Wild Irish Rose. Because yeah. you go down to liquor store, you say, "Give me Rosie a skirt," and so yeah. they give it to you in a in a brown paper bag, covering up the label, so nobody can see it. In a mm -hmm. skirt. That's nice. Go get some see, beer, beer. Yeah, some near beer. Are you close enough to or to Utah that they sell near beer where you are? Uh, you know, they probably do somewhere. We got some pretentious places around here that sell all kinds of beer. See, Oregon and Boston, of two places I know. Well, or, or, Oregon, all of Oregon, and just Boston. I don't know about the rest of the state. Anyways, uh, lots and lots of microbrews. Now, I'm sure Everywhere has microbrews, though, places, right? Cities and states where they have lots of microbrews, but... See, but I think that's good, though. That doesn't make it necessarily pretentious. I mean, that'd be like saying all the indie developers are pretentious. Yeah, you can't get away from microbrews. It's kind of funny, actually. Here in Oregon, microbrews are the big thing for the last 15 years or so. But now, all the microbreweries are getting so big that they're being called macrobreweries because they're really doing, like, big batches anymore. They don't really do tiny batches, so... 
Now, here's what I'm saying. I'm backtracking a little bit, and I'm saying that when I when, when I'm talking about pretentious microbrews, I'm talking about the kind that are like thirteen dollars a bottle. I'm talking yeah. like the super expensive. Uh, what is that expensive beer that has the blue label? <clears throat> Shit, it's not Stella, but it's something else. The point is, is that I can't afford it, so we need to get cheap stuff. <laughs> so you're just into the you're just into the, the cheap stuff. You know, Exactly, and Eric's working on his cheap sandwiches. Hot dog, could it be cheaper? Hey, hang, hang tight, I'll be right back. Right. All Looks right. good. Oh, you got the tongs too, Eric? You're looking oh, yeah. right, right there. I, ha I don't have any finger, I don't have any uh, uh, fingerprints on my index finger and thumb because I don't have tongs. <laughs> right, right. Oh, the, the baseball game's on. <laughs> got it. Like, you know... Eat a hot dog and watch the game. It's kind of a thing. Thirty more like games it. left. Oh, I like that uh, Quest Lord T-shirt. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a little home home jobby screen print thing. It's kind of nice. Did you do the screen print yourself, or did you use like the iron? Yeah, well, you know, my artist uh, made this like crazy uh, painting, right? That I'm going to use for Quest Lord Two. Uh, so I turned it into a black and white for my book, Quest Lord. Very nice. Oh, hey, check that out. And that, that was really easy. I just took a, I just turned it black and white and then took it into flash, I guess, and converted it to vector. So I was able to get, like, all kinds of cool stuff. I think I got somewhere, I think you guys have seen the koozies, right? <laughs> I yep. yep. I think you guys have seen the koozies. There's a koozie. So did you just yeah. use a service like Cafe Dude. Press or something like that to make those? I, I, I did for the koozies, because I, I didn't want to screen koozies. But for the shirt, uh, it was kind of easy. I just uh, I bought, like, a $20 screen printing uh, kit, you know, and uh, I you know used emulsion and stuck it out in the sun, which is real easy to do down here in Texas. <laughs> Plenty and, of sun. And yeah, I just, you know, made my own frame and screen and just screened them. It was really easy. Do high school kids still... You know, make silk screen prints in high school. Like, like that was that was a cool thing when I was in high school. It was like you know, but but you know, when I went to high school, we still had an actual photo lab where we used chemicals and right. you know enlargers. So yeah, I don't know if they do that anymore. Huh. So would I don't you know, would, dude. would you screen print like if people wanted to order T-shirts from you, would you screen print them ha by hand and send them off? I would I would arrange something where I'd have like a special deal, you know, like certain like a limited number. I wouldn't I would go if I was gonna like take orders from the public. Yeah. First of all, you know, there's not really that much of a demand. Now I've tried to do that before, and it's just like people really aren't too into it. But if you go to like uh, what is it, indie game shirts? Yeah, that's I, your I site. Have, I, have, right? I have the dot com indie games t shirt IndieGameShirts.com or something like that, but I haven't done the. Uh, I think they passed some new thing, some I can information. I don't understand that whole I can thing. You have to get your who is like registered or something, and I'm just too lazy to register my stuff. But I have a Weebly site, and there's a there's a Twitter there's a Twitter. It's at IndieGameShirts, and there's a link on there, and you'll see it's got like. A bunch of guys from the indie scene have their own T-shirts and stuff. There's tons of sites that'll like make merch for you. The problem is, you know, after they take their cut, it becomes prohibitively expensive to sell it to your fans, right? It's all boutique. It's all like you know, uh, vanity press, like on Amazon. Like, there's no point to getting like 50 sweatshirts printed up that you're, you know, you're gonna get like, you know, your normal spread and hand them out to just random folks. Like, why would you even bother? Yeah, that's a disaster. Huh. You know I, mean? I, I was, I was yeah. gonna ask you guys about Game Stick. Game Stick, what about it? That's exactly what I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically dead. I mean, is it really? Essentially, like it's not I mean, really. Because I went to it, and I, you know, I saw you can build for it and stuff, and it looked pretty cool. And I was thinking, hey, this might be cool to. You know, to make a build for, because I want to do Amazon TV for Quest Lord 2. I've got my little display in a snapshot, right? Mm -hmm. so, so basically, I can pretty much just throw an if then check device, and I guess I can do if device is Amazon TV. 
asking? I'm asking. I think I think there's a fire model type that you can check for. Okay, so I could do something like that, and then I could just rearrange how the screen is, and you wouldn't need the buttons. You could just use the controller stuff, the stuff that Alex put in this weekend. Right, Alex? Yes, sir. So it might be cool. I don't know, but so this game six dead. Did, did, is it like Oya? Oh yeah, like everything's free. You have to yeah. make a free app. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, it's like um. I don't like that. I think that Ouya drops that provision model. eventually. I th I think you can have. Oh yeah, you can charge app. now, but I think Game Stick, you still have to you still have to do it. I actually was emailing the guy to get the development firmware, uh, like a year ago. I still have the email in my inbox. I don't want to forget about it. Yeah, it was almost a year to the day now. Um, and he like he gave me a Dropbox link that's now dead. <laughs> So, oh, nice. Yeah, I don't even think this dude is with GameStick anymore. Well, they have a, they have a great looking website. Yeah. yeah, the website is stellar. I mean, it was a Kickstarter success story. You know what I mean? It was a cool idea. Um, I, like I got a game. I got one just so I could have a portable controller that I could test. You know, on a tablet when I go somewhere. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, but I never really thought about actually developing and deploying to the platform. I think Oh Yeah would be way more profitable, I guess, as far as a play because GameStick has their own service as well. Like they don't, you don't install with the Play Store. Yeah, I would think Amazon TV would be far more profitable than both of them. Yeah. Oh, totally. So totally. And, and and two have a, a a better chance at having a um, a long you know longevity just based on the fact that it's backed by Amazon, right? Yeah, and, and like I said, the big rumor that's about uh, Apple. We'll find out in a couple weeks. And Apple will be more profitable than all three combined, right? Yeah, not even one week, right? The, I mean, their, their press conference is next, next, next Tuesday. Wednesday. Right? Tuesday, so, uh, Tuesday. Eric, I got a question for you. What? You, you asked about the game, Dave. <laughs> then you said you had an interest in Amazon. You could just get the Amazon Fire TV, the stick... That's cheaper than getting the uh, game stick. Yeah, right. Does it come with a controller? It comes with a controller. A handheld... Uh, just, uh, there are two versions. One comes with a controller, one comes with a uh, remote. When I when I say controller, what I mean is the uh, remote, the one with the circle on it. Uh, yeah, see, that's got to be worthless. Uh, yeah, it's got it's just got a few buttons. Um, I mean, there's, there's left, more, right, up, down. That's a pretty good controller. I'm gonna put it put it in the screen. I can't see. Ooh, cool. <laughs> click on this. Click on his window, Eric, and it'll pop right up. Ed, are you saying that we can detect those keys? Oh yeah, we can definitely can detect the key inputs uh, from the, the controller there. I wrote a. You know, it's no longer functional, but I wrote at one time a mod module that is that uh, uh, Greg used uh, for for that and for the. Controller itself, you know, the joystick. But then it so wasn't that good of a module, though. So he had, had to make some changes. But yeah, it's you, you, see that you can detect the uh, key event of the remote. That's a, that's that I feel yeah. like. Is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this is I mean for all you know all. Okay, it's it's just a okay, it's just like an same device. device. Show us the end, the uh, the other the end the end of the stick. Does it have like a power input or? I think it's HDMI. No, the other right? it, it's 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 HDMI. It has a uh, it has a USB power input, which I just run right off the television. Mm -hmm. um, which they say, you know, it, it if it draws too much power, it might require the um, power adapter. Uh huh. But I just plug it in right into the into the um, into USB the TV. TV. Yeah, and it, and it works just fine. And that's it. So that's all. I, that's, that. I would plug it into my home monitor. And then power it from my USB because I would need to work on it upstairs because I get a I've got a uh, HDMI to uh, you know uh, DV uh, VGA adapter so I could do that and then um, have you ever tried to upload any content to that uh, like side loaded uh, yeah like an APK mm -hmm. no 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 and side loaded anything onto it mm -hmm. see that so Ed wait I want to confirm so you're saying that there. all I didn't know Greg was here go yeah. ahead Alex shoot so you're saying that all key presses on this remote are detectable? Absolutely. Uh, all except for, okay, some of them ha override. You see, you uh, you can catch them, but you can't do anything with them. Okay. Uh, I think it's home. Greg, if you remember, 
you know, on the Amazon, uh, which of the buttons you can't press? I think you can't catch the home button, and uh, there's one other one, I think, that one with the little line. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's the menu button. That's the menu button, yeah. Uh, so you oh, can just use the back. Right there. Yeah. So you can just catch the back and the rewind, fast forward, play, and then the directional buttons. Yeah, up, down, left, right. It's still I mean, kind of crazy though. Is there a way to uh, detect what device on Amazon TV that they're using? Like, is there a way? Yeah, you, know, you can detect what device you're on. Okay. No, meaning like, are they? Can you detect if they're using that remote or if they're using yeah. a full-on controller? That's what I'm asking. You'd have to, yeah, you'd have to detect the key inputs from that. But the controller has okay. got some additional key inputs. You would be able to keep. Right. You wouldn't be able to tell until they push the button. Right, right, so you'd have to prompt like you were on like a keyboard and say, "Hey, press your whatever key." But the thing is, is the controller and the handheld. Now, uh, Greg could talk to this because he's. I think you've got both. They share key codes for certain buttons. So, like the home button is a home button for both, and rewind and fast forward and whatnot. And then the controller has extra inputs that you would get, but you can't tell which one they've got. I don't believe until they push a button. So you can tell them, like, uh, determine which controller you're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The recommended one is... Probably. A... Yeah, you could probably yeah. say, hey, you know, if you've got the handheld controller, move your joystick or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If not... Yeah. It sounds like something I want to do after I ship, you know, and I have a little time, but that's, that's really cool. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be, that's, I've never considered that question. Interesting, it's like detecting which one they've got. Maybe, you know, I don't know. That's interesting. We might be able to dig more into that and see if there's a I way. I think this is going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to be like a gold rush, to, so to speak, or whatever. But I think it's going to be like um, kind of, it, it would be advantageous to get something ready uh, late November, early December for this product. Well, you know what I'm wondering here is we're talking about uh, Amazon, and they got the underground program going on. Oh, no, yeah. Underground program? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whether or not you're interested, I mean the hot dog. Interested, just let me ask this question. <laughs> I'm Don't. wondering if the underground program applies just to uh, Android devices, or if it applies to like the Fire TV and the Fire TV Stick too. Tell us about uh, the underground program first, Ed. Lay, lay some base knowledge. Well, the, uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad this topic came up though because I wanted to discuss it for sure. Have you guys heard about? Have you, do you guys know what Lords of Midnight is? Lords of Midnight. No, but it sounds uh, deep and dark. No, it's sorry. A pretty successful game uh, series that's just been ported over to, and the guy is blogging about his experiences. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna look it up now. Hot dog's not settling right. Is he already unhappy, or is he is he on underground? Is that why you're bringing that up, or? Yeah, he's on underground. It's just it's looking. I don't know. It sounds like it's gonna be pretty grim. Hmm. What is the what is the market like? Why would anybody do that? Because it, it's it's free games, and the do people pay by the minute, or the developers pay by the minute? Amazon. Like, I don't even fucking understand the idea. The the thrust of the whole idea is very simple. If you have an app that is paid or has in app purchases on Google Play Developer or Google Developer, whatever, you, you can sell it, not sell it. You can give it away for free on the Amazon Underground. With everything's free, the in-app purchases are free. Everything you can't charge any money, but for every minute that people play your game, Amazon will pay you a fixed amount. It's like a penny. It's less. It's, it's way less than a penny. Yeah, it's twelve. It's twelve cents an hour, but it's yeah, it's a fraction of. Yeah, you know this only makes sense with numbers. You know, um, my game is an eight-hour game or six to eight hours, like if you're really good. Yeah, what you need is... How is much do I make there? Playing, 60 well, cents? Go ahead, shoot. I'd make like 60 cents, right? Well, if you for sell it for a dollar, yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. sell it for a dollar, then it might be a You'd deal. You'd make 96 cents if it was eight hours. Right. It doesn't make sense for games that... Right, you need to get a huge, massive hit. Yeah, you know which, yeah, you know this is this is good. Okay, I I don't think this is entirely evil. Okay, so consider I've been thinking a lot about this. So you got totally partially evil. <laughs> so you got games where what are you trying? How are you trying to monetize it? Okay, forget about the games where you're selling it. Let's say 
you're trying to do in-app purchases, and then you got some ads. Okay? How many people make the in-app purchases? Not a lot. Now, some do, but if you're a small developer, that may be really hit and miss for you. But if you can get some players, it seems like knowing that you're going to make at least a little bit of money for every player is better. I don't know. It's yeah. I don't think I don't think anybody's that. saying. Ed, you know what's interesting about that is, uh, I did the free app of the day thing. Yeah. With Amazon. Yeah. And I had ninety-eight thousand downloads one weekend worldwide. Ninety-eight thousand people downloaded my app. Right. And so then multiply 98,000 times five minutes, let's just say, and then they gave up. And I'm not saying they would. No, 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 that's cool. That's a lot of pennies. So would that equal... 98,000. Yeah, do the math on that for 5. me. 5.02 times... Uh, that's $9,800 in your pocket. That can't be right. Hold on, let me do it again. 98... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It's not. It's not 9, right. 000, that's nine thousand. His pockets are empty. They can't be right. If Underground had been around and those players all only played an average of five minutes, you would have made almost ten thousand dollars in one day or whatever that period was. You know, now, nobody's saying that the program is is evil. I don't think anybody's saying it's just another way to monetize. But it's oh, like I'm excited about it. I'm willing to give it a shot. Well, I got exits, my invite. Right? I'm going to move my two games over and shoot for the moon. Now we know why the wine got broke out tonight. All right, <laughs> finally. Well, I put a link to an a, a TechCrunch article uh, where they, they basically say that the, the company, being Amazon, pays developers based on how long you, uh, you use a certain app. Amazon monitors permanent use while developers waive in-app purchases upfront cost. Amazon has already tried this strategy with the Kindle Unlimited subscription service. The company pays royalties to writers based on how many pages you read, and then they go on to kind of uh, compare it to Spotify or Apple Music, RDO, or something like that. You know, this this uh, paying paying the content producer based on you know per, uh, usage, so you know pennies per minute or whatever. Yeah, I'm looking. You said you put the link in here. Yeah, 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 I thought it did. Didn't I? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, eight, 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 eighteen TechCrunch. It's the. Uh, oh, I don't have it. Why don't uh, I? Uh, I don't know. Here, I'll put it in again. That might actually be better than selling it for a dollar. Uh, oh no, for, eight eighteen your local time. Go ahead, Eric. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That might actually be better than selling. I mean, because Amazon is like my weakest, weakest seller. You know, well, I think that, I've, yeah. Well, and that same article goes on to say that basically. Um, you know that there really wasn't, um, you know that that Apple introduced in-app purchases. Uh, let's see here. What does it say? Uh, yeah, it says okay. So Amazon Underground is an interesting move for, the, for a couple of reasons. When the app stores launched in 2008, the most popular apps were paid apps. Over the years, there have been a big. There's been a big race to the bottom as big app publishers launched popular free apps, and small publishers tried to game the charts by temporarily making their apps free. Uh, this trend was even worse on Android as many users didn't want to pay a dime for an app and app developers had no choice but to rely on banner ads to support their apps. And then in 2009, Apple allowed in-app purchases for free apps and it basically shaped the, the way that the store stores uh, work today. And then it goes on to say, you know, that uh, even Angry Birds is having a hard time with that because, you know, they're they're more of a, a paid model, right? Not even a subscription. I mean, a, an advertiser based, I guess. Yeah, they also blew up their company to like 300 employees, you know. Well, 12, yeah, there's some of that. 12 executives and... <laughs> right, right. Right, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah they're just mentioning them as a... Uh, uh, in, in terms of the marketplace is not exactly... Cut I mean, they'd be doing really good if they stayed like, you know, a 12-man 12, 12 operation or a 20-man operation. Right. You can't sell T-shirts in Walmart with 20-man operations. Yeah, they have to have 3 trillion people. Exactly. They've completely lost their focus on actually making money. But yeah, you know, but 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 the one thing, uh, another caveat I have about this is like the Amazon store now, right? You can go with a, any kind of Android device and download from the Amazon store. In fact, in fact, I believe the underground whole, this whole campaign, that's what they're really trying to do is capture more of the generic market 
of all of these devices, not just the fire devices. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's the problem. That's the huge problem for me because uh, my bread and butter is Google is Google Play. Yeah, so yeah, you got to consider that. Money on it. I don't want those dollars. people to be like. I don't want those people to be like, not paying four ninety nine or three ninety nine for Quest right. Two. Right. If you're able to charge a premium for your product, it doesn't make much sense to take it over to the underground. Because you could definitely shoot yourself in the foot for the intelligent user who says, "Oh, I just install the client, whatever the hell it is." And oh, look at me! I got to count one for myself. Uh, I'll install the thing for Amazon and download via the Amazon store and get it for free. And Eric gets ten cents because I played it, and then I was like, I forgot to play it anymore. Right. No, I'm sure they don't. I don't know what your users are like, but you know, I didn't play your game to completion, but I still played it. But I. At least an hour. So, I had this one lady who called me, who who hit my Facebook forum, and said she's on her fifth run through it. Well, that's the thing about your game. I tested it like I think six run throughs. Yeah, she's well, insane. Yeah. <laughs> There's, yeah, why not? I mean, if if your game, if and, and I mean you, anybody, anybody's game has multiple paths, and you enjoy the the path. You enjoyed the the journey the first time. Why well, not take it again and make alternative decisions? I do that when I play games. Right. I play a game that gives me branching choices, like uh, like FTL for example, something like that. I'll play it multiple times and choose different ways just to see how it turns out. So Eric, have you ever ever considered uh, encouraging these people to to get groups of other people together? Like if they're if they have friends who are just as um, Avid as they are, fanatic. I was gonna I was gonna use the word fanatic, but I was like that sounds negative. No, 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 avid, oh, uh, oh, good. passionate oh, as, as they are about the topic. You know, getting them together in in a group seems like a, a great thing, and then and then be able to you know either do that on some sort of Google Hangout or maybe start like you know just local groups, right? I mean, imagine a a a, a, a gathering of like fifty to a hundred people who are all playing your game. Right, right. You know, one thing is like. Uh, it got pretty. It's been pretty scattered. It's been a long time, but I got really lucky, I think, with the uh, with how, what a, what a lazy programmer I am, because I didn't want to do an instru. I wanted to do like an instructions, an in-game instructions. But I just didn't have time, so I sent it to a website, and on that website, I put a link to the Facebook, you know, site. Like you know, like and I called it the Guild. And a lot of people click, what's this guild thing? And they clicked it, and it went. It goes to the Facebook app thing. And I've got like 800 people on there right now. And they're yeah. really into it. And they keep discussing it, and they keep having talks about it and stuff. And they made like the wiki and stuff. So that's kind of like my little fan base. And it's, and it's kind of good, too, because I get to like actually see the people. It's not this random kind of crazy thing. Or sometimes isn't the most you know, appealing thing. But you know, there's all walks of life, and I got all kinds of fans. But that's like kind of my my, my base, kind yeah. of so to speak. Well, that, but that's interesting though. You're talking about uh, you know the, the it being a, a lazy programmer issue, but right there is uh, inadvertently you've got a way for people to be able to share your application, right? A wiki, a wiki about it that they have to go then go out and look at, and then they can. They can share it because we're always trying to encourage people to you know share your score from yeah. the app or we're trying to lock everything into the app, but that doesn't provide people the ability to share your app without either pimping their friends or or you know going jumping through hoops. Yeah, and they made the wiki too. I didn't even have anything to do with it. No, it was kind of crazy. That's sweet as shit. So what you're telling me is is that I should stop trying to teach my users how to play my game. Don't do instructions. Just do a thing that goes to a page that goes to Facebook, and I'll be good. Actually, exactly. that's kind of what I do believe. I do believe that uh, as a as a as the developer, you need to don't focus on other developers so much, and focus on the users out there in the world. That's my that's been my whole strategy since I started this. Is like if I can get users and contact users and interact with those users, then I've always got those users. It's like right now I have 800 people on a Facebook page that I can send messages to about anything. Eric, what would you say as an example of targeting, of marketing to developers? 
Well, developers are like me. They're broke. I mean, I don't exactly. Really like, why would anybody ever want me to get something? Like, I'll definitely tell people about how awesome a game is or how cool an app is or whatever. Yeah. But I can't, as a groundswell of like you know support, like I can't do much from behind my <laughs> from behind my computer, unfortunately, because I'm typing. I got the tippity type going on over here. I lost Greg. Greg's gone. Oh well. Well, Ed. Speaking of teaching your users, how's your uh, people leaving? How's your hire a hitman program going? Not a single taker. Um, Not one. What the fuck are you talking about? I thought it was great. You got a sweet picture going on with guns and sunglasses. I know. You got a guy. He looks like he's gonna kill you. It's all good. Exactly. You know, not, you know what? Twice, not twice, but three times. You know? Well run campaign. You know that that's a hard picture to to uh, source too, right? Because what's what's a hitman look like? Right? You don't you don't want to be like. You don't have wanna... you seen that? Have you seen my store page picture for that? I did. I saw it today. Yeah. No, is it? It's not the same one. You got a new picture? No, 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 no. I just <laughs> I looked around for something that I could use for free, and I'm like, oh, that'll work. Really? <laughs> you timed it with the with the release of the Hitman 47 movie. I mean, your marketing couldn't have been better. <laughs> yeah, if I'd only known I was doing that. See, you didn't even know you <laughs> I were mean, doing yeah, this. I totally did that on purpose here. Exactly. Can't believe no takers. It's crazy. It's funny because I see a lot of people are. Um, there are some folks giving advice on the forums that are that uh, the the, uh, the advice is less than ideal, and we'll leave it at that. So it's funny that it's that you're not getting any uh, you're not getting any bites. I I'm kind of not surprised. You know, I've come to the conclusion that you know I've got a number of metrics to look at. Uh, I've got a selfie. I've got a, another server, Gumroad. And uh, it's really cooled off in terms of purchases of products and people looking into things. And I know that some of my things are getting kind of old, but still. I mean, I, let's look at some graphs here. Let me, let me find a graph. Oh, this is going to be so fun. The best part of any podcast is metrics and statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I don't know if it'll let me present more than one month at a time, but I'll, I'll see if I can do it. Everybody cross you your fingers. You guys talk about something else while I try to figure this out. What is this? What is this? What's this guy hanging by the red and green dots here? Oh, shoot. You get to see what I'm working on here. Oh, man. I'm working on a game prototype. I got a several game prototypes. I, I thought I was going to get three prototypes done today, but I only got two. So, mm. Yeah, I'm working on a, um, a prototype of a game that involves uh, ragdolls and climbing and some other stuff like that. So. You can see he's having a good old time there. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> well, since we're talking about ragdoll physics, did you guys anybody see the question in the forum about replicating cloth physics, cloth dynamics, and Corona with the physics engine? Doesn't I did sound not. Like it. No. And I was wondering. I was like, I mean, it's you an probably interesting just, question, though. Yeah, there's a really cool uh, web web app where you where it's like um just like tearing a cloth apart using those same kind of physics and you know chains and shit like that. And I was wondering like wouldn't you just combine the uh, the chain demo with the ragdoll demo and try to like just hack it into something that looks kind of like a flowing dress? Cuz in this the example that the person gave was that they wanted to create like think of like Casper, you know, right, and right. Casper is a ghost you drag it around the screen and you would be able to see like the flowing billowy, you know, Mm. Uh, ephemeralness of its trail or whatever, and as it goes and it waves in the wind and all that. And I was like, well, I feel like the rag doll would would do it, but I mean, maybe the chain would be better because it's individual strands and you would just make multiple strands and stuff. Are you Spider Man swinging there, Ed? <laughs> that looks like you're Spider Man swinging. Yeah. Actually, pew, pew. Sorry, I'll tell you about that in a minute. I should stay on the bed. <laughs> let me let me focus. I totally like Spider Man. Spider Man just totally cut you off, but I keep talking. Yeah, sorry, Alex. I didn't. Alex, know, I, I got this. Why did Spider-Man come up and? Why aren't you paying attention? <laughs> no, no. I was just, I was just pontificating on how one would replicate, cl you know, clothing dynamics in, uh, in the in the Corona Box 2D implementation. Yeah, fascinating I stuff. Red, I, know. I was really like, oh, I don't know if I really want to answer that. Uh, you know, I almost, I almost think. Uh, I mean, it depends on the needs of the game, but I almost think that, that incorporating physics might not be the best way to do that. It might be to come up with a series of static animations and detect the direction you're going and maybe, you know, rotate that in. So if you're heading left, 
here, you know, make, and you could have different ones, you know, detect the velocity, right? So you could have two or three different speeds, um, but it might be a better, it might be lighter lifting just to sort of fake it. Why do you think it would be better, you think it would just be, it would be um, cheaper as far as uh, taxing of your computer? Or of your device? Yeah, and I don't, you know, I mean, f using the physics engine for something like clothing that you're probably not going to want collisions based off of, it just, I think there's the possibility for something, not that it would screw up collisions if you're, you know, setting something as a sensor, but it might look weird. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you run into the possibility that something's going to bunch up with something else and it might end up looking a little weird. And I think you might, if you if you have just some simple sprite animations that react to the direction and velocity of the player character, right, that might be a uh, you might get more bang for your buck. Maybe I mean it depends on the needs of the game. Here's what I found in my travels, and you know, in wherever it is that I go on the internet, and this is what I think this person is trying to replicate, which I think is a really cool effect. And, like, this is something that's, you know, dynamic in, you know, in whatever physics implementation they have here in HTML. But, like, mm -hmm. you can actually rip it. Wow. Yeah, which is pretty cool looking, I thought. But I feel like that might be what they're, what they're trying to go for. That might be the effect that they're trying to, to achieve. So it's a little bit more... Re I guess realistic is the wrong thing to say, but it's... It has a little bit more. Uh, it feels right. Of a, yeah, exactly. It feels it's tactile. It's tactile. How about that? Yeah, I kept waiting for Steven to chime in and go. Yeah, I can make a four input shader. And <laughs> exactly. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna work, man. It's like the angle behind and the thing and the what's it and there it is. I love it and when people it can do it. I love it when people wander into the Lua language sub forum and they ask like a relatively simple question or whatever, and um. Sorry, I'm going to stop sharing. Sorry. And they ask a relatively simple question, and then Steve comes in, and he's like, let me reinvent the wheel for you guys real quick. So if everybody has a week and a half to learn what I'm telling you, then you will, you two will be a little master. No, that's the thing with Steve. He's, you know, for him, he's like, yes, this is child's play. Right, it's obvious. Why is it you cannot follow me? <laughs> We're all like, sine, cosine, square, one of your, who's it? I'm having a lot of fun with this little tech demo that you linked to, though. This little uh, right cross now. Imagine thing. that's on your phone, and you and I think that would be super cool. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No. Well, and if it's if it's a gameplay mechanic, then yeah, you'd want something like this. I was sort of envisioning it's window dressing. You know, it's it's something that just sort of. I hear you. I don't. I'm mean, honestly, it was like four lines what they said in the form, so who knows? But it seemed like they wanted it to be central. Yeah. They wanted it to be to integral. Yeah. But who knows? I just thought I found that someday, and I thought it was uh, that was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Claw Simulator 2015, number one app forever, <laughs> says Mike. <laughs> Claw Simulator 2015.tumblr.com. Chuck, lock oh, it up. No. Oh man. Lock it up. Lock <laughs> it up. So. I don't know about Underground. Underground sounds pretty sweet. It sounds like Ed's going to test the waters for us and see if there's mercury or we well, might get two, lead poisoning. i got two apps, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely do it because they're both not making any money. So, at Yeah, I feel like that's the point, right? If you're not right. making anything, you might as well. Right, yeah, and they're not making... They're making well, they're very... They're both extremely old. They're so old, i got to rebuild them. So. <laughs> Watch out. You didn't use Sprite Lock, did you? They're like Corona two years ago, so I might actually have to take 2.0 convert them. So... So I put a I put a FAQ in the chat for under, underground, which might be of interest to you guys, because there's one of the questions that uh, I know uh, came up offline was, do you have to change your code? What do you have to do to your app? And uh, as far as I know, I mean, uh, Corona doesn't need to do for anything from an engineering standpoint, but. Uh, it says I think here, Michael Dub said that it works right out of the box. Yeah, but it says, do I need to do anything special to build and package my app for Amazon Underground? And it says, you must rebuild your app with an Android package's name that is unique across all platforms where your app is sold. Which is what we do anyway. I mean, right. I don't know anybody who builds a special one for Android or for Amazon. Or, you know, that that's an ignorant thing to say. Who knows what other people do, but it seems like you would just build straight with both. 
So, Ed, do you do you use two different build names when you deploy for Google Play and Android, or excuse me, and for Amazon? I do not. Yeah, I figure everybody uses the same thing. I'm half attending. I cannot find a way to show these metrics. This is very disappointing. Oh no, sad face. Well, you know, know okay, so I can show you the metrics, but the dashboard's like super boring. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I can't even find the window. Where is it now? I do the many things on. You just maybe do some finger puppets. Exactly. <laughs> I need to do a, <laughs> Not a finger. The finger puppets. Not that big. You need you, you need to pantomime the, st the stats that you're looking at. Okay, so this is selfie, September 2013, so a year ago. Yeah. And then uh, I'm sorry, uh, two a year ago in my time, two years ago. <laughs> and then um, let's go back a month and. No one uh, we know why you use such old profile pictures. You can't tell time, yeah. right? Well, actually, the picture was from yesterday. I got more views. No, I'm a total liar. So we got August 2015, 1199 views, $68 made. That's so the uh, it, in case it's the views are on the left and the revenues on the right. And then um, let's try 2014, 476 views, but 81 dollars. So I got a lot less views, but I got like people who had more money burning holes in their pockets. Fascinating. So, too, bad, too bad you don't know what those what the, those things were that were purchased during that time. Yeah, I can drill down to what they were. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> Isn't that good to know, right? I mean, what 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 was what was the pain point for people? Right. Yeah, I should. You know, if I were like you, Charles, I would actually go beyond and just going, oh look, eleven eighty one done. Charles would be like, okay, where did the view go? And like, where did they not buy? Why did they not buy? Maybe I could change the price point. The pain point, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what I need. I need you, Charles. I need you to be like in charge of all that stuff. <laughs> I'll do it, man. You want me to do it, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm going to charge you premium. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more metrics. That's my site stats. Woo, exciting. It's pretty fun. My God. Somebody bring up another topic for the love of Christ. See, I love what this else stuff, man. I, I am totally digging this. This is pretty normal, though. This really doesn't Tell me change more. at all for me. This is average, just like around 2,000 to 3,000. So. Which is great, though. That's consistently. Uh, yeah. I'm, des I'm flailing about for something else to look at. Yeah, unfortunately, I reset my site. I lost... That's the thing, is I wish I had, like, retained my original numbers, because back when I was... Because I've been doing running this site for years and years, and uh, I ran it and ran it and ran it and ran it, and then I changed, um, I rebuilt my server, and I lost all my metrics. Yeah, so that's why you got to run uh, something like Google Analytics, which I, mean, I know people hate, but uh, you know you can go back. To, what, what was it like six years ago? Yeah, because it was like night and day popularity difference back when I was writing my books and stuff like that. So. Anyway, so Ed, I saw you uh, commented on the slowed down physics object forum yeah. thread that was started there, and uh, it seemed like that person was happy with my answer. Indeed, it seemed as though they were. Good job. So, what exactly? I mean, I always think about the idea of like bullet time and like actually just slowing down your uh, your animations, I guess, and mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Like, I feel like that's kind of the poor man's way to do it. Not that there's a, you know, there's a, a right or wrong way. But do you think that's what they were trying to achieve here? Because I didn't really get what they were trying I to do. I think what they wanted, so if I remember the question, they said, I want my whatever it is to impact, to hit something, and then to slow down for a little while, and then to speed back up. Right. So, like, to take some of the velocity out due to the collision. But then, when you looked at their code, what they were doing was just frame after frame, it looked like, setting the linear velocity back to the same value. So, of course, it's like not going to work, because you just set it right back to what the value was every frame. Right. So, yeah, right. so I told them, yeah, you really don't want to do that. I don't suggest using set linear velocity every frame. You can do it, but better to uh, do a force and try to limit the velocity, use a little uh, damping, and because then you get a lot better, you know, when your thing hits something else, and if it can push that thing out of the way, then it'll slow down right. the projectile or the moving object a little bit, and then it'll speed back up. 
Right, right. I mean, I completely agree. I was curious as to... I saw that, yeah, you, he was satisfied or he was happy with your answer for sure. It's funny um, because I think a lot of users get really super confused between impulse, set linear velocity, and apply force. It's like they, what? they're lost. I don't know which one I'm supposed to use and how I'm supposed to use it. Right. Did you guys talk about that when you were talking about how to use physics in game development in your series on Corona Geek during uh, the day, which is obvious? Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, apply force. I mean, every time we use it in any of these examples, I always talk about how you need to apply it frame after frame. It's a every frame kind of thing. I mean, you can do it less than every frame, I would suppose, but I really don't see the purpose. And then I, uh, we have talked about impulse, and uh, in fact, we did a whole s series with the rocket ship uh, example, and I, I gave examples of how all these things worked, and uh, people could modify. It. In fact, you know what I'm talking about—the one with the little rocket ship. Yep, I'll find it. I mean, yeah, I have no idea. What angular uh, program. velocities and dampings and all that stuff. So it sounds like yes, you did go over yeah, it in we, your. We series. thoroughly covered it. And occasionally I'll link people, uh, people back to that demo so they can pull it out and go, because uh, it's got little, little bits of code in there where they can change each individual one and then see how they work. Right. So they can interact with it and say, oh, well, that's what it did. I'm seeing a lot of people that are seeing a lot of physics-based questions in the forum these days. I'm interested. Yeah, I, I told Rob... I was, I'm sorry. I told Rob one time that it's kind of funny that these questions that we see in the forum sort of go in groups. It's like a couple months ago it was all about uh, AdMob, and now it's all about physics. What do you? Why do you think that is? Do you think that somebody wrote an article somewhere and they're talking about how much money you make from Ad? <laughs> you think they're all cheating on an assignment somewhere? I honestly don't know. I, I just made that joke, though, because I released, uh, released one of my answer packs yesterday or today, uh -huh. and uh, I, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, but then I finally did. I chose, you know, those people who are asking those questions where I said, you know, are you guys... Right. You this, this, seems like more, this seems like more than a trend, right? I didn't now, quite know. go so far to say, are you guys like taking a class together? But that's really what I was implying. Right, right, right. So I put it in the answer pack. And then uh, I said, this was my favorite question of the month. It was asked three times. <laughs> and uh, then it's like, I called it, the answer's called homework. <laughs> <laughs> Inside jokes. Yeah. So, kind of joke, so I like it. I like it a lot. So, I mean, I, wa I do wonder about that, though, because I feel like, you know, Lords of Midnight, you know, for example, gets popular. All of a sudden, you probably have a lot of people using the base, you know, ZX Spectrum palette, and start, then they start making adventure games. They look for um, strong game engines that can integrate ads and has a pretty simple IAP integration, and they hit Corona, and then all of a sudden they've got questions about how they would handle turning and how they would handle sprite uh, population and things like that, and you're like, all these questions tend to be very specific, because of course you're always going to be making a specific game, but... They're so specific that there's no there's no real wriggle room for trying to get them to explain what they're doing because they don't want to give away the whole goat. You know what I mean? They don't want to be like this is the this is the game. Here's the marketing materials. Here's what I pattern. I'd be happier if they said, "Hey, I saw this game, this exact game. I want to learn how to do that because I'm all I, with it. I'm completely good. I'm 100 percent fine with people wanting to reproduce a mechanic that they saw as I, long as they don't try to sell it. You know." I, well, there you go. I think that's the. I think that's what they're scared of. Is that let's say it turns into the next hit, and then people start, you know, going over the breadcrumbs of its internet fame, and they find the first forum post where the guy's like, "Hey, I want to copy Angry Birds," and you're like, "Ah, oh, this guy's a cheater. He just wanted to copy it." Whether or not it's right that they are going to get indignant about it. I mean. Yeah. You know what? I. I wouldn't even anymore. Yeah. Now, it's one thing if they're like, it sounds like they're homework, but it's another thing I would say, I would like to learn how to do the thing that I saw in, what's it, XYZ game. I'm like, yeah. yeah, cool. Which I think is sweet, and I think that's how everybody comes to it at first anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Charles, did you find it? Because I just found it. Uh, well, you had the project there, but yeah, I put a link in the uh, chat to the YouTube videos. So... So, yeah, I'm showing show on my it. screen is that project. Let me get the source code up here. I don't need to show you. I just need to control. I want to control it. That's all. 
because it's got two parts in it. It's got a forces example, which is all these different rocket ships you see here. And it, the little text down here may be hard to read. It tells you about the force. And then if you click on the box, it does the thing and applies the force. So and then the little red dots show you like where the force is being applied. Uh, not equal forces. Torque. But then, you know, a variety of things. And then you can change it and then in the code, I'll do it here where you can't see it, rerun this, and now it's all about impulses. So you can see like whoop the difference between impulses. Oh that's cool. Yeah, so when people get like they're like, oh I'm confused. Like, oh, that's my favorite one right there. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you do, it always goes book. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. It's like I don't even do that on purpose. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. It's good to help people visualize these things. Yeah, so I just send them a link of this and go, here, look at the source code. It's super simple. It's all commented. Read it. That would be a really... Did you already do a forum post with this? Uh, no, we did a whole Corona Geek episode on it. I think it would be a really sweet forum post. I should probably do that. You should. You would probably get some pretty sweet heat at the I'm end of the week. I about writing an article some on something else, actually. Let me find it. Some pretty sweet heat. Some pretty sweet heat, bro. I only bring the sweetest of heat. <laughs> it's sounding a little bit strange to me. It's after dark, Dad. Just go with it. I'm, I'm going with it. Lie back and think of England. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. That sounded a little bit wrong, whatever it was. Oh, this is one of my favorite questions. I forget where I heard that, but I say that all the time, and like nobody under 50 understands at all what I'm talking about. But then all the baby boomers who are watching the History Channel are like, all right. <laughs> what did you say? I didn't hear it. I'm like, I was all concentrating on what path I was looking at. I said you need to go with it. You need to lie back and think of England. Yeah, I'm totally not getting it. <laughs> Google that. Uh, I don't know, the problem with this stupid thing is you can't I'll see it again. Do we have any? Well, we, I feel like we have a pretty good contingent of, of Brits that call in, but not tonight. I guess not. I guess not. Well, I wish uh, Craig hadn't left. He's probably like, yeah, Ed couldn't even remember my name there for a minute. I'm like, <laughs> you blew it, Ed. I thought you were supposed to be networking. I have, it's a senior moment or something, man. It's the wine. It is the wine. That's right. Oh, what the hell is it? Oh, shoot. That's, I think that's two from me, too. So I, I put in uh, lay B in Google, and pretty much it just auto-completed lay back and think of England. Nice. <laughs> wow, okay. Does it source it, or is it just a term from World War II? So Rob, if Rob is listening, I'm wondering, uh, I saw this. This is like a hot topic recently, the shuffle bag. You guys hear anything about shuffle bags recently in like Gama Sutra and whatever? You guys read those? No, I read it, but I don't know anything about shuffle bag. <coughs> yeah, so the yeah. shuffle bag is... Go ahead, Rob. <coughs> I've not heard that term either. So shuffle bag is, consider you want to make the game like Boggle or something where you want to have a random distribution of the uh, results, but you want to have some control over it too. So you'd like to be able to weigh certain uh, dice or certain letters. So what you can do is you can create what's called a shuffle bag, which is basically nothing more than a table. Can, for us, it's nothing more than a table containing the values that you want to randomize over, and then you can weigh certain values in that bag. For example, if the bag contained 1 through 10, but you wanted to have twice as many 5s as anything else, you'd put twice as many 5s in, then you shuffle the bag, you merely randomize the order, and then you pick out the first element over and over and over, and every time you do, you take it out of the bag, and you put it in your used bag until you've emptied your bag out, and then you put everything back in the original table, you reshuffle it, and you just keep doing that. Okay. I've never heard the term shuffle bag before, but yes, that's a very common technique. Yeah. So, because we've had, really, I think last month would have been a better time to, to do it, but we had people who were like, you remember the posts we had? I know you weighed in on a couple of these where they're like, why do I keep getting back one when I do random one, two? And I'm like, well, because that's kind of normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over any short run, it's very possible when flipping a coin to get the same result of heads for 20 straight flips. I mean, it's, that's a realistic possibility. Yeah. Over a million is going to average out, but on any short run... 
uh, your distribution is unpredictable. Exactly. So, anyways, I just I thought maybe uh, I, I, I'm I've been floating the idea myself of like writing a quick forum post or something on uh, the difference between just randomly choosing values and then creating a shuffle bag to have a little more control over distribution over the short run. Two words. Guest tutorial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob's fingers are getting tired, Ed. You need some help. Yeah, man, I'm sure they are. You guys have got too many things to write and do. So. What do you guys usually advise for somebody who's trying to, you know, use the coin flip analogy and, and just wants, you know, one of two possible, you know, iterate over a thousand and if it's even, it's heads, and if it's odds, it's tails, or... Oh, oh, so, like, if you only got... If, if you want a coin flip, you need to take math random at its heart mm. and let the let the randomness of the coin flip kick in. Mm. I mean, if not, you may as well just oscillate between 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Does anybody remember back in the day when um, people listened to music? Up, when people first... That was the thing. When people were really starting to listen to music on their computers and everything, and they were like, the random that I'm getting from iTunes, Winamp, VLC, whatever, it's not random enough. This is not, this is too actual random, meaning like you would get songs back to back to back, like it wouldn't respect genres or anything like that. So it wasn't the random that their minds really wanted. So somebody started a project where they were taking the cyclical rhythm of the ocean and how it was react, you know, how it would actually come in with the tides and the moon distance and everything like that, yeah. turning it into an algorithm, throwing that out as an actual numeric value and then using that as their randomizer on their music selections. So that's how they would decide what music they would be listening to. And I was like, oh my god. That sounds so crazy. Why wouldn't you just say, fuck it. I would just listen to the random on this computer. Like, that is, the, that is the craziest of randoms, in my opinion. I don't know how that would... How that would help you. That's like a lot of work. My head over here. That's what I'm saying. It's so obsessive. I, I admired the, what went into it. Exactly. Just the next. Until you got to Wu-Tang or whatever. So that's what I really want to do. <laughs> that's not a curse word, Ed. Don't look that up. I don't know up. what Wu-Tang is. <laughs> well, I don't know. You're over there drinking box I wine. I didn't have Bill in front of that. Okay, that's all. sleeping hat on. Notice that I didn't go. Number two of three. That's all I got. First one is random number generator something. Steven, you've completely lost me. Decocify and unmute and tell us what that meant. <laughs> You're muted still. We're talking about plugins. <laughs> yeah, Michael put the link in the store uh, oh, in the chat okay. to the store. I'm, the, I'm I'm way behind on looking so at the things here. So Stephen, you published a uh, random plugin, right? Randomizer. A random number generator. Uh, a seedable one. So it, you you can seed multiple generators and run them independently. Generating. Oh, so you can thing. have multiple uh, independent uh, generators, so you can have one and pull ten values out of it, and then go back. Are they uh, project, deterministic? One, what? Are they deterministic? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what what to use is your uh, base algorithm for them? Do you it remember? Is, I don't think there's an actual name for it, but it's Marsaglia's multiply with carry random number generator. Never. Why did you ask him that, Ed? You knew he wouldn't understand what he was saying. No, it's, no, I've got... <laughs> this is an interest of mine. Go ahead, you, Stephen, then I'll answer his question. Go ahead, Stephen. There's a link in... Uh, uh, just a second, this will take me a little short while there. Okay. I'm going to go look up the reason. I'm going to show the reason why that was interesting to me. So, Ding dong, where is it? Yeah, I love that all these plugins are beginning to show up. I mean, we've got, um, you know, Sagri wrote several. Um, Steven's written several. I mean... Ed hasn't written any, because he's a lazy git. <laughs> we got to get Ed Mike, and uh, Chris Barley to write some Mike needs to come in here and tell us about it. What is going on, Michael? Tell us more about this plugin. Or can you not talk? He probably can't talk. I don't know why he even comes on here. Mike, you're teasing us. But how <laughs> the oh, I'm using is. the meeting room right now. To do it. Oh, good man. Yes, you knew. You knew we wanted to hear you. Where is it? So is the know, this is getting annoying. Going crazy. 
Uh, yeah, we got a fair good uh, amount of submissions. Awesome. What do you want to see? What do you feel like the App Store, the plugin store, is lacking that it could use? I'd like to see some uh, plugins targeting desktop, like support for uh, menus, things like that. I saw somebody. Who is that? No two games. I forget what that dude's name is. Nigel, I want to say. That probably isn't right. But mm -hmm. anyway, I heard he was talking about uh, creating like yeah, a menu system and uh, keystrokes for selecting different UI elements, which mm -hmm. I thought would be cool, but I don't know. I have no idea how you would get that in so it would be universal. Uh, you'd have to just use his routine for generating the, the UI elements, I guess. Which would be kind of annoying. But anyway, yes, awesome. Desktop plugins. That would be super sweet. Yeah, that'd be cool. Super duper sweet. What's going on with the VK? So who even who uses VK? What is he, what even is that? That's a social network in Russia. Yeah, uh, Lurg's working on it. It's right. it's on the store, but it's hidden right now. Okay, I didn't know if it was done or not. I saw you guys talking about it last week. Is, is, I haven't heard any support requests from him in a while, so I might make it go live. I think All he's right. on uh, holiday. Oh, okay. So. Uh, yeah, according to one of the last hangouts that we had with him, he said it was like the Russian version of Facebook. <laughs> Which is terrifying as all hell. Well, you know, that it brings up the point that, uh, you know, that every time we think that, you know, there's our version of something, right, there's a there's another version someplace else, right? There's there's some some version <laughs> in China or some version in Russia, and there's just billions of people that, that, that you know, are not even connected. Um, when I feel we're like... Not, really we're not connected, though. When I feel like really procrastinating, I go on and I look for uh, image albums of Russian dating site pictures, and I just laugh my ass off because those pictures are so amazing. There's one where a guy's posing with like a clogged toilet and two bottles of vodka with no shirt on, and I'm like, yes, man. You yes. understand how the world works. You've, you've seen it. And you, know. you know. You know what is going on right now, and I hope that you're doing that. So I'm going to answer your question in 30 seconds or less from like five minutes ago, Alex. <laughs> or time traveling? You asked me why I asked Stephen which algorithm he used, and the reason I asked him is because I also am interested in random number generators with various attributes, and in fact at one time, it's no longer in there, SSK had a whole bunch of different random number generators in it, including everybody's favorite, the Mersine, Mersine Twister, or at least my favorite, uh, but a number of other uh, uh, generators. And you're seeing some of them here in the file, although there's a variety of other ones that I'm not showing. So. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask you why you asked him, because who cares? Because I care very much. I didn't ask you why you ask him, because I knew that we wouldn't understand what he said. It would be in like... <laughs> yeah, you missed it, Stephen. We were talking about your earlier... If your ears were burning, it's a good yeah. thing. But we were talking... I was saying... I think uh, I think the quote was is that Stephen will sometimes tell us something, and we'll all be like, "Yeah, I like totally don't understand what you just said, but okay." It's obviously <laughs> genius, but if Not we can understand it, because you're too smart. Would, That's the, somebody. Oh, this is the ghost thing we were talking about. That right, right, right. Did you okay? Let's back up. Ooh, rewind. Did you see the post earlier today where the gal wanted to do? A animation where she says, "I want to drag my thing and have the things flowing behind it." And how do I how do I animate it like a ghost? And I thought, oh, Stephen's going to chime in. He's going to go, "Well, we've got four inputs for the shaders, and I'm thinking we can do the angle and the position and the thing and the velocity." Yeah, that'll work. I was waiting for you to answer. He did. He get in there. <laughs> he was like, "You probably." Got all right. He just did. You just link the Box Two D forum, just like the whole the, the main page. Well, the reason I had that I had that link ready because I was kind of looking at doing something like that a while ago. <laughs> you already had it. You had it on the front burner. Yeah, and I I knew. Well, I'm thinking there could be an effect to put on top of it, but it'll take some time if I wanted to do it. I don't know if you can see the other. I don't know if you can scroll up in the in the uh, in the chat over here, Stephen. But there's a link that I put in. You know, don't even bother. I'm going to go find it and put it in again. Um, this, is a, this is a link to like the cloth, to a, a a kind of a cloth generator. It's cloth ripping generator on, in HTML, which I think is what this. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I think that's what the the young lady was looking for. Um, 
and I was saying, you know, I guess you could just do... I was saying something, you know, the dumbed-down version is combine ragdoll and chains, and that's basically what you're looking for, but when you're thinking about dragging the, uh, dragging the ghost across the screen, are you saying that it's all going to... The, the clothing, you know, the ephemeralness of the ghost is going to be done um, by the physics engine? Or the, because Jason was actually saying that maybe that she could just use a sprite sheet, you know, just have a few different animations and use those. Which do you think would be less, you know, uh, intensive on the device? A sprite sheet wouldn't have physics necessarily. Or... Say again? Well, a sprite Right, she wouldn't necessarily have physics. That's what he's saying. It well, that was my, my thinking on it was that, and again, it depends on the needs of it, because then Alex sort of posted the link to this cloth ripping, which seems like it would be more of a mechanic for the game. But assuming it was purely window dressing, I just want when the character's moving left or right, I want sort of this, uh, I think you said a dress or whatever, to sort of sway. I said, you know, you could lighten the overhead by, uh, you know, coming up with a couple of, <clears> you know, short frame animations that if you check the velocity, right, so if the character is moving right and it's moving slower than this, use this animation for the dress movement. If it's moving faster than this, move this one. If it's moving left, you, you know, and it could be a way of sort of faking that. But again, that was assuming that it was more just about uh, visuals and less about mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how accurate you want it to feel. And, you know, you can get it pretty accurate looking if you had enough sprites involved. Yeah, there was actually... Uh, my, well, what it reminded me of, I've recently started listening to uh, the Thimbleweed Park development um, podcast. I guess it was, something, it was part of their Kickstarter or whatever they used for that. You know, it was one of their things. was, okay, well, we'll have a weekly uh, dev podcast where we talk about it. So it's, um, it's Ron Gilbert and... Uh, David Fox, who actually uh, has done some Corona development in the last couple of years. Have you ever had him on the show, Charles? Mm-mm. That would be cool no. to have him. I don't know if he's done anything in recent years, but he did uh, Electric Eggplant as his company, and then they do, like, kids. Yeah. Yeah, when we've, and, we've talked back and forth via email. He just hasn't been on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so it's him and uh, Gary Winnick, I think, is, is the third guy, and they sort of get together and talk, and they were talking about, um, you know, specifically in the context of a 2D adventure game, but sort of coming up with streamlining animations. So, you know, for any given character, you, and you have a cast of characters, you got, they're walking right, they're walking left, they're walking up, they're walking down, um, you know, standard sort of, well, we're grabbing something up high, we're grabbing something down low, and then they, and then it's about sort of weighing the pros and cons of whether or not a specific action is worthy of the overhead, the cost, and the time to create a custom animation. So, um, but that got me thinking that, like, you know, a good game like that, you don't realize that it's recycling stock animations over and over again if it's done well. So that's why I was thinking, like, if this was done right, you know, you could probably fake this in a way that, that it would be invisible to the user. You should put a, a, you know, just get a motion tracking suit, right? Get yourself a ghost. <laughs> get Andy Circus. Yeah. He's not doing Put your ping pong zone, that's right. Get some real gate, you know, some real data in. points. <laughs> Eric, Eric left. Eric was like, oh, he's talking about 2D adventure games again. I'm out of here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Eric what? just comes, Eric comes in, wants to know about Apple TV, and then he bounces. <laughs> I don't get to see him anymore. So, so I put in uh, Thimble into Google, and it came up with Thimbleweed. I'm like, what? How? They're listening to our conversations. I mean, it just freaks me out when I when I do that. When I go to search for something that seems seemingly like Thimble, right? Thimble is a pretty common word, I would think. And then Thimbleweed just automatically gets suggested to me. I'm like, yeah, it's suspect. Uh, it's okay. dark. It's so we got dark Sarah, magic. We got Cortana. We got Echo. Holy crap. We got, what's Google? Does Google have one? And what is it called? The Does electronic Google dictionary. It's Google. Just Google. <laughs> Google. <laughs> they don't okay, even put a name Google. to it. It's just Google. Okay, Google. Google, yeah. Yeah. give me a link for a million dollars. I don't like their new logo. Anybody? Does anybody like that new logo? Is this the official logo? Because uh, 
I saw it on the, the search today, but I didn't realize it was like a you know the logo. I think is it not? I don't know. I they that. they said I that it is. <laughs> I didn't even watch the because it's got a video on it. I didn't watch the video. It looks almost like Comic Sans, and obviously I'm yeah. everybody's favorite font. What are you talking yeah. about? Diametrically opposed. Yeah, here it's on their it's on their official official blog. <laughs> I'm still not sure what we're talking about. Uh, Google updated their logo today. They did a rebrand, Ed. Get on. Well, that's because yeah. they're not. Well, because now they're a subsidiary of. That's right. Their they're Alphabet Soup now. now. Alphabet. That's right. What are they? Are we about? Are we talking about? Uh, well, they they have Alphabet is the holding company. Here, right here. Of Google. Yeah. And that's where Sergey and and Larry are going. Where you been, man? Yeah. How the how is Google not buying everything else? I don't understand how they need to be a subsidiary of anything. Everything well, else should be a subsidiary no. of them. Well, that's what I think it relates to. It says, well, you know, Google is a search company, so we should make that make parent company the thing that buys everything and does everything, and let Google focus on being Google. I see. I think. Don't, I can't speak for Google, but. Well, you can, but you may be wrong. So. They'll be listening, and they'll write a blog post about it. Yeah. Or Google will say. You're wrong. <laughs> they are like a little link. <laughs> yeah, Don't they're, they're, stop talking about me. There's there's a link in the in the chat for Alphabet, the Alphabet announcement, and then the changes for today. I don't know. When I first saw that in the Wall Street Journal, I always say that so people think I'm an old stodgy guy. But anyways, <laughs> in the Wall so, Street Journal, just for fun again. You gotta be smoking so, a cigar when you say that. My first thought was is like, man, I feel totally bad for the people who are not in Google proper anymore. Because yesterday, and that's the day I read the article, yesterday they used to be able to say when they went out to a bar, hey, where do you work? Oh, I work over at Google. Now they're like, well, where do you work? Oh, I work over at Alphabet. Yeah. What the hell is that? Yeah. I work across the street from Google. <laughs> I used to work at Google. Oh, you got fired? No, no. I, I still, oh, forget it. <laughs> Too complicated. I can't explain it. Go read the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah, what do they say? What do you think? Do you think they can still... Do they have the, everybody gets new business cards? Does anybody have business cards business anymore? Cards. Dude, Who has business cards? Oh, 20 years ago. I was telling business me about his business That's so Wall Street Journal. I've still got, a, I've still got a, like a thousand business cards in my closet, though. So I'm They're not on the shelf? They don't have a space on the <laughs> shelf? they got to go in the closet? <laughs> yeah, I don't got room on the shelf. For business. Messed up, bro. Okay, let me Does, does anybody use an app to share information anymore? Like, you know, you remember you used to have Bump and all those other things. Does anybody even try that anymore? Dude, I tried Bump once, and it took like a half an hour to get it to work. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work very well, and you kind of felt like an idiot. Yeah, you felt like a douche because you were like, no, hold on, hold on, wait. Okay, now, now is yours on? All right, hold on. Okay, now, all right, all right, dude, all right, hold on. Hold on, wait. It's like, all right, just tell me your fucking name, man. Like, this doesn't need to be like a discourse in how to use five phones. That is the best description of bump I've ever heard. It's so accurate, right? I was in a bar once, and we were like both like half slosh, like trying to knock our phones together, like a couple of assholes. And it's like, look, dude, just give me your name and your phone number. It's not. It does not have to be rocket science. Crazy. Yeah, I think that's the one and only time I ever tried it. it was like, right. This is right. Stupid. This is stupid. I think everybody tried it at least once. Because it sounds like a great idea, right? So, like just like the little, uh, you know, like uh, barcode QR codes. You know, they sound like a great right. idea, but they don't. It hasn't yeah. taken off. I never want to shit on people when they want it, like you know, Lurg's Lurg's barcode app or, or plugin or whatever. Like I don't want to be like. He didn't the invent the QR code though. He filled a niche. Right. There were a lot of people asking for it. So. And that's what I'm saying. I asked Lurg. I was like, Lurg, what do you what? What? Why? What are you using? What? Who uses this? And what? What do they use it for? He's like, well, you know, companies. It's specific. Companies use it for scanning their products, and you know, blah blah. blah. So, all right, it's proprietary. Like you're never out in you know a store, and it's like, let me price check this you know loofah with the loofah on Amazon. Like obviously, Amazon's going to be cheaper. What's even the point of scanning it? I think if Apple came in and said, oh hey, by the way, we added support for QR codes. Right, you don't have to install a, a scanner. You don't have to do anything. You just point the your phone at the thing, and boop, you know, it comes up. People would use it. The, the QR code would be like the the hottest thing ever. Somewhere in Apple, they're like, we're gonna do it, but we're gonna call it the Apple Code. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are AR code. Exactly. I, 
I've got a, a, my scanning app was actually done by AT and T, and if I'm in a store and I want to do a price lookup, I just scan the barcode, or you know whatever, and it will bring up to like a Google search of that app, and I can go see what other people are selling it. For. You know where it's you know where it's great. It's context sensitive. So the Amazon app, for example, has a way for you if you want to price compare. If you're in a store, you want to see if you can get it cheaper online. You fire up the Amazon app. It has a little scanner. Now that's not so much for QR codes, though. I imagine it can read QR codes. It's more about the standard barcodes you'd see on the back of a product. But you scan it, and boop, it shows you the price. That's a really good use of that technology. Yeah. And that's exactly what I think it would be useful for. Is like that's really the only. You're in a store, you see some shampoo. You're like, I need shampoo. This smells good. I want the shampoo. Is this sh the shampoo is nine fifty? That's how I buy shampoo. <laughs> well, this shampoo. I don't have any hair, so I don't. Gee, know Alex, how I buy your hair. hair smells terrific. Yeah, I don't have <laughs> exactly. I need to get some. Gee, your hair smells terrific. The ladies are gonna like me with the shampoo. I need some scalp wax. The scalp <laughs> wax smells good. Sandalwood. I like I like the musk that's going on with this. I wonder musk. how much this is going to cost. Oh, no, boy. we're learning way too much about you now. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think I think it, like events where somebody's like, hey, you know, go to our website for this uh, this uh, this event or this promotion or this whatever, right? And then you know, go to go to monkey.com slash banana slash bunch slash you know like whatever, and you, you know, boop, you just QR code it and go right there. Right. Now here's hey, where I really saw well. something really cool. It, it definitely works and works well. Here's something that I think is cool: two defunct or less used technologies. One, the business card. Two, the QR code. Have you ever seen people that have QR codes printed on their business cards? And when you you can use AR, you can use augmented reality with that with your QR reader, and it actually brings up a 3D representation of like a little guy showing your phone number and your email address on your phone. You ever seen? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about, guys? Shit! Now I sound like an asshole. All right, now I gotta find it. But basically, what it is is it's, you know, it's exactly what I'm doing. They're like, like helping you out. We're like exactly. I sound like. Two is it like one of those uh, one of those way, puzzles where you're supposed to look at it cross-eyed? It, it's kind of like that, except not at all. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that. Exactly like not. that. Except not. What was that noise just now? It sounded like somebody was killing a small pig. Oh, uh, that's my <laughs> laugh. I, everybody I know says that I laugh like an evil what? villain, like a Disney from a Disney video or something. <laughs> so now you're like, uh, oh, I'm not coming on the show I'll, anymore. It's a jerk. <laughs> I'll tell you something. We did kind of cool with QR codes with my son. Um, he was trying to get a music blog started, and um, so we set up a WordPress site for him, and I even did a, an app uh, that would RSS read from his R of uh, his. Um, Website, which I mean, that's what fed the RSS reader in the business sample app, um, and we um, went to like, well, what's that website where you can print cheap business cards, um, and did a bunch of uh, postcards with his logo on it, what the website was about, and we put a QR code on there that you know when you scanned it, it would take you to download the app, you know, or take you to the you know to the website, so he he could leave these business or not business cards, but uh, postcard type things in the various music stores for people to go um, find his blog. And you know, we use the QR code scanner for or QR codes for that purpose. That's kind of tricky because you know I don't know if you are like me, but when I see one of these QR codes, I don't see them that often. I'm like, what's this QR code? I'm gonna scan it and see what it is. Yeah, exactly. Your curiosity gets you, right? You want to know what it is. It's not like I see them every place. Because if I was surrounded by QR codes, I'd be like, oh, okay, I've scanned 10 of them, though. I'm done for now. Holy cow. Hold on. Let's see here. This is uh, this is blowing my simple human mind here. Are you looking, Are you looking at that video else? right now? There he is. Yeah. Are you looking at a video, Charles? Yeah, hold on. You see what I'm saying? All right, now you understand what I'm talking about. Like this guy, so he, he's got his QR code on the back of his card. He's looking, I guess he's recording with his phone, and it's a video of him, like, turning around and being like, hi, my name is Josh. You guys should totally buy a house for me. I'm not a scumbag. Which <laughs> is, I would definitely cool. believe him. Right. It's kind of chill. It's cool. Are you totally so I, do you have to, get the, you have to get the app, though, right? I think, right, I think it's a, it's a custom-built app, I believe. Or, no, I, I think it's anything. I mean, it's, if you're reading the QR code, this should do it. It's the, thing, the way I feel like about all this AR, it's like it's cool, and the and you try it once, and you jump through the hoops you have to jump through to try it, 
And then you go, we have this bunch of hoops I have to jump through to do this, so I'm going to try it once. Yeah. yeah, at least, uh, yeah, at least you know, with Amazon, you have a reason to keep the app installed, right? Ooh. Yeah. Because right. now you're like, well, I want to know the prices of it. I want to get stuff cheaper, right? You'll keep the app. Like I had was that the Red Laser uh, app, mm -hmm. you know, and that was kind of cool, but it wasn't right directly connected to to Amazon. Well, there, there's there's kids' toys that were trying to take advantage of this, where it was like you could buy a specific card or something you, like that and it would upgrade the stats of the robot that you had and so you'd be fighting other people's robots and yeah it sounds tedious even talking about it so maybe it wasn't that cool. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm no, there, didn't they do like a they did like a series a commercial series where they like tried to get this whole thing going and so there's there's physical elements to this game, but then there's also uh, electronic parts or uh, parts that you play with your your on your phone. Is that is that what you're talking about, or? I have no idea. What is Michael talking about, Michael? What's curiosity? Cur curiosity? curiosity? Are you just saying QR? Curiosity? QR? Curiosity? QR? Curiosity? QR? Is that curiosity. what it is? Like you are? AR? Has that been no. has that been like, branded? Has somebody like curiosity? Has I don't know. Somebody use that because that's uh that's a clever. Is the dot com available? That's it. Yeah. Michael, to <laughs> meet and tell us. Michael, what does this mean? I think he went to the bathroom. He's he's not even there. He's frozen. He has no idea. <laughs> yeah. So, so then your head said you went to look up the QR codes. Okay. Yes, that's what it is. Jeez. Yes. Yes, we should get on that, Charles. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm totally there. I'm on it right now. We've got so much money now with all this squatting. Oh my God! I'm so excited <laughs> to get my internet money in the mail. What are you guys going to buy with your dollars? Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't even bring going, that up. You going to South Park on us? I'm going to buy a new uh, Apple TV with a controller. <laughs> Blow everybody's minds. So, talked about the cloth effect. I wanted to talk about something else besides Google's terrible, terrible rebranding. Curiosity is taken. That doesn't surprise me. You take any word, you take out a couple <laughs> of the vowels. There's some app somewhere that's like it's like it's like how uh, drug companies have people that just sit, you know have you know monkeys at typewriters coming up with names of drugs that they can copy or uh, trademark for you know ten years down the line. It's like I don't know. Take the dictionary, take out half the vowels, and we'll and we'll trademark that as an app name someday. It is weird how the names don't really correspond to success anymore. The weirdest names. Has anybody ever used um, Slack? Yeah, sure. You know that Have you used Slack, Charles? Yeah, it's great. It is great, right? Yeah. It's fed, and it's like the dumbest thing in the world. Like, who needs its your own proprietary like in you know uh, IM system? But it's so good that you want to use it. <laughs> you want to use it all the time. You know the awesome backstory to those guys is that they um, they they were actually a venture funded uh, project. They needed they wanted something to be able to communicate internally, besides you know the the IM solutions that were out there. So they created they created this thing, and then the original project you know started tanking or didn't 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 you know didn't fly. And so then uh, they had a little bit of money left. And they said, well, hey, we got this uh, thing we built internally. <laughs> Let's try to make a product out of it. So they're the only true tech pivot that ever is an actual pivot and actually works. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, besides, yeah, I mean, we have a pivot. I mean, uh, Twitter was an internal project as well, but, you know, obviously. Uh, Twitter was Why are you making me look bad, Charles? It, oh, yeah, Twitter was an internal project. project to, um, what was it? It was like a podcast. Um, Seems like it was a podcast site or something like that. I can't remember at the moment, but anyway, was it really? It was. A, it was just somebody who was tooling around with something or other, and then all of a sudden they said this would be cool if we yeah, use yeah. this in the real world. Yeah, yeah. Twitter, Twitter was like, hey, we'll we'll do it internally. Again, another messaging system internally, right? We'll do this internally. Uh, hmm. er, everybody can see everything, all the conversations in real time, right? And then um, they released it internally, and I think that the, the story goes something like. They sh somebody said, shared it with somebody outside, and somebody outside said, "Hey, this is great, you know." And, can, and then they just sort of decided to open it up to everybody. Pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, can we do a Corona Geek book club? Since, or we can do a Corona Geek game club. I think wasn't 
Well, Jason, weren't you talking about that last week? With that, yeah, or it might have been a couple of weeks ago. I just thought it'd be you know get get everybody playing the same thing and talk about it, right? I'm in. I'm into that for sure. I also want to do a game jam for Windows Desktop, or maybe we should do a plug-in jam for Michael to make him feel. Yeah, sweet. bring it. <laughs> so we want to. So we'll, well, let's play a Laura like Laura Croft game, the first one. You know, right? Like the, we could do that, and I can toss in a year of Enterprise for the winner. Oh snap! Ooh, uh, Michael's got swag good. to hand out. He's just mm-hmm. tossing that shit out of his bag. <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe if I had more time, I would be part of that. You should you should start publicizing that, Michael. Which Lara Croft game are we talking about? The new mobile one, the Go. Oh yeah, the new mobile one. Yeah. Because I haven't I haven't played the Hitman Go, but I hear it's uh, I hear it's supposed to be pretty good. I just saw it the other day. I thought it was funny. The Lara Croft one or the Hitman one? The Lara Croft one. Just tell the most supposed to be. Have you been good. watching Lonnie Doss? What? He did no. a video review of it. No, no. No, I just saw it on the Apple uh, Apple Store, you know, just straight uh, I never played Laura. I never played any Tomb Raider games. Really? I was a Resident Evil guy. With you? I was a Resident what Evil was, guy. Which means you had a PlayStation and you didn't you didn't you didn't get it back in the day? I didn't. I didn't. I got Resident Evil. I was I was more into Claire and Chris. <laughs> didn't really Claire, care about um about uh, Lara Croft, unfortunately, and a sacrilege. Well, you are the master of unlocking. What was that? What was that horrible phrase? It's you, the master of unlocking. <laughs> what was that in Lara Croft? No, that was like the original. I never played. Uh, I never played Resident Evil Two, oh, which no? I understand most people love. I played the first one back when. First one was dope. The second one was kind of. It was not awesome, but it was good. It was good for what it was. I mean, it didn't really get great again until 4, like 2 and 3, and then Raccoon, or what is it, Umbrella Chronicles were kind of like simple, blah, blah. But 4 was, you know, blew everybody's faces off because it was just so fucking good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I still play that game to this day. I still play the mercenary stages where you're, like, going through and actually racking up points. I have a PlayStation 2 dedicated specifically. I've got my... Who I don't want to get into it, but the point is, is that, <laughs> that's you okay. You can shame Sounds yourself. Sounds like you already you are. are. I was gonna overshare. I cut myself. I've got out. a PlayStation Two myself. Is it on the shelf or is it plugged in? It's plugged in. It's in my. I've got a a cabinet in my office here where I've got all my computers, so I can switch over to different ones on my monitors. Very. I've got my Xbox and my PlayStation, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation, whatever. No, PlayStation Two. I got my Ouya. You guys that you love so much. Do you play that, Ed, or do you just use it for testing? Ah, uh, no, I just use it for development. I did way back. Yeah. When I thought it was gonna be a thing. I did too. I've got it sitting here collecting dust, and I always want to plug it in and do more testing with it, but I never get around to it. It, it might become my. Anymore. It might become my emulator machine, and I don't get to do it that often. I have a Mac Mini hooked up to the TV that you know I can use, but. If it's got a better front end, if you can navigate it easier with the uh, controller, that might be my like go-to emulator device. I've seen people put XBMC on there, but it's so it's difficult and it's you it's not really worth the squeeze from mm. that particular fruit. So um, I don't know how much you know people will be undertaking it. I want to see what Razer does with it. I don't know if they just bought the you know if it's an aqua hire. They just wanted the talent. And then they don't necessarily want to make their own platform. Or I think it might have been a patent buy. Yeah, yeah, probably. But right. I think the press release basically said they were just you know hiring the talent out. Yeah. And then they were going to discontinue the um, tech, the physical box. I know that's what Google did with Green Throttle too, which was kind of a cool like that hardware is so cool. It actually. Oh, that was one of the best game controllers I've ever held in my hands. Right. Right? Yeah. I know you guys were working with those dudes, and like that was really cool. And I've got four of them in my house, and I can't get them to hook up to anything anymore. They don't I'm work really... anymore. They don't work at all. Well, they, really when they annoying. when when they got bought though, they released. Have you guys applied the um, the firmware update? Yes. I haven't found it. Does it still work? Well, you can't anymore because the website's been taken down that had the firmware update. Oh, okay. Uh, but I had updated all of mine to standard HID controllers. Um. But you know, Windows won't recognize it. Mac won't recognize it. Um, what Android about, will. Uh, what about, what about using Ed's library? 
did you remember Ed, you did a library back in the day, right, for game? Yeah. Game yeah but you still have to you still have to uh, get the Bluetooth to recognize it, mm -hmm. and um, you know if if you can't get it connected to the device, Ed's library is not going to be too much of a help. Got it. Plus, because I loved Ed's library. I thought it was a, a brilliant way to, you know, mess with that controller. Do yours work, Charles? What's that? Do your Do your green throttles work? No, I haven't. Well, I haven't messed with them in a long time. I mean, they they got bought. I was kind of like, well, all right, you know. <laughs> and, and I, the trash. Well, now, yeah, I want to, I'm going to keep them for, uh, you know, as uh, what do we call that like. Uh, Nostalgia. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. I mean, one of these days, these things are going to be worth a million bucks, and I'm going to sell them. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think that's going to be the case with tech? Like, I I've been moving between for the last eleven years with a case of maybe a hundred and ten different comics from like the seventies. Like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to cash in on these. As soon the day after you throw those out, they'll be worth a lot. Exactly. Is it going to be the same thing with tech? Is it like, oh, I've got Your this? Your box of comics. Right, this first gen. Like, didn't somebody just buy like one of the first Macs for like, what was it? Like eleven, what was it, like eleven thousand or something from Sotheby's or something like that? Yeah, I think you have to wait uh, about twenty years and let everybody have thrown theirs out and you know get gotten destroyed somehow, and then you have a limited quantity in supply, and then you can pop up and say, oh, by the way, I have a first generation whatever, and I will sell it to you for a million dollars. You know. Aren't we getting to the point where that's no longer going to be uh, viable? Because, like, you know, we've got digital distribution. Like, everybody's got a white box computer. Nobody, you know, wh how often in the future, how many more generations are we going to be able to buy a new console? Yeah. It's going to be rare. So are we just going to be, is it going to be like the Warhammer 40K future where everybody's passing around, like, data slates? It's like, oh, this is the first time this data slate ever had, like, so-and-so's book on it or whatever. I'm super <laughs> nerdy right now, but you guys know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you think that there's going to be this fetishized uh, undercurrent of, of old technology that you're going to be able to purchase in the future? Uh, you know, I don't know. There, there probably will be... I mean, there's first for everything, right? I mean, the, the original iPhone, maybe that has, like, some... Some validity to it, but the, the the 3s or the 3, you know, whatever, maybe not. Um, but the well, yeah, now you're what you're talking about is the generalization of computing, right? We're getting to the point. Like right now, we're talking about um, whether or not we should have games on Apple TV and and things like that. But you're gonna get to a point where you know the watch is gonna make a phone call, and the and the phone will make a phone call, and the TV will make a phone call, and you know what I'm saying? Like it's not going to matter. It's just going to be the device. It's not. It's going to be. I think it'll be so so commonplace and so vanilla that you you won't, you won't, you won't even it won't be special anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like now we're talking about the Internet of Things. Now we're onto a topic. All right. All right. <laughs> we need to start developing. We're in. Yeah. That's right. We got on the topic. We did it. This is how we do. This is how we do. But, I but seriously, definitely... though, you know, because like right now, I've got the Apple Watch, right? And when and and without the without the phone, it's it's an it's just a, a nice watch, right? And not even that. <laughs> by some people's definitions, right? Uh, so a very but, expensive watch. Yeah, but the but the day that I can make phone calls from it and I can get Spotify on it, you know, without a phone and and be able to like really do things with it, now it's just. It's just seamless, and I, I can I can t I can take the call anywhere without special hardware, or special devices. And we what shall you, in drink. your perfect world, what would you do with that watch to make a call? Would you hold the watch up to your ear? Would it be connected to Bluetooth? Would you oh, I like... talk to it, right? Like you can do Siri on it now, right? And Siri actually on the on the watch is actually better than on the phone. So you would you would get a call from you know whoever from your HMO. Yeah. You, you know, you're in Albertsons, you're right. in line, you're staring at the People magazine, you know, Blue Cross calls you, it's like, hey, we don't think you're, you know, when you got your boil lance at your dermatologist, we're not going to cover that. And you're like, what are you talking about? That was totally covered. I need to go back in and get that lance again anyway. It's filling up with pus again. I don't understand why you guys are giving me this hassle. And they're like, look, sir, I know this is hard for you to believe, and I understand that this is a distraction. It's like, I know it's a distraction. I'm in line at Albertsons. You're telling me that my pus-filled boil that got lanced last week isn't going to be covered? And now the guy behind you is like, I, I, don't, I don't 
want to buy my chicken breasts anymore. I'm not even really hungry. I'm going to turn around and go home. Just cry quietly in a dark room. I don't know why people would ever want to get a phone call on their watch. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Well, I think you should, you know, maybe be a little more selective about the calls that you take on your watch, but... Uh, you can't but see I, who's calling. Your watch I, face no. is like a quarter. All you're no, going to see it, is it, HM. No, it tells me, it tells me who's it calling. I've, I've taken, I have taken calls on the watch. I've oh, had my hand... I've had my, I've had, when I was moving, I had boxes in my hand. My phone was in my pocket. The, the watch rang, and I was able to, you know, twist my arm and look, and then I was able to touch the watch, <laughs> and I, I took it, right? And I took the call, and it, and it, and it went well, and all that stuff like that, but... Um, so you and your cousin were carrying the love seat down three flights of steps. You got a phone call. It was from some who knows who. It was somebody more important than the 300-pound piece of furniture that was in both <laughs> of your hands going down steps. You're like, oh, hold on, Joe. Got to take this phone call right now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, it was, you know, it, yeah, but it was, it, was easy, it was easy. It was easier than, let me just say, it was easier than taking the, the phone out of my pocket at the time. What would have been probably the easiest thing is for you to worry more about <laughs> the actual moving, moving the L section boxes. that you were running down the steps than taking the phone call. I hear what you're saying. Yes, phone yeah. calls on your watch, I guess, will be useful. I'm see, I'm showing my old man jeans right now. I don't know if I'll ever be able to in my in my body feel good about taking a phone call on a watch. Well, see, but I want to be like Dick Tracy. I want well, see, to. The, the phone call though is just is just an example, right? I mean, we're talking like again. Whether or not it's this game stick, or it's the Apple TV, or it's the laptop, or the or the tablet, or you know, like like you won't have to think about where you're going to play the game. You'll just play it on whatever device that you're looking at at the time, or the one that you prefer, right? Like that one of the things I think about, is valid. Like yeah. one of the things that I, I love and hate about Minecraft. I love, love playing Minecraft, but if you play it on the, the mobile device, you, you have a world there, and if you play it on the computer, you have a world there, and if you play it, you know, on the Xbox, you have a world there. I, I just want to like start it up wherever I am and play it, and I want to play the world that I've spent hours, you know, creating. So you're saying that with Minecraft mobile, Xbox, co or PC, you're not ever connecting to the same server. It's mm -hmm. all a mobile server, a console server, and a PC server. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're always. Know, yeah. Yeah, you're well. You're always, uh, yeah, you're always like on the, the mobile device. You're just connecting. You're just like, you're you're always playing local. You're not really gotcha. play, connecting connecting to an internet server. You can do a shared world on a local network or between devices, but uh, but even that is still like the one that you created, and that that one is separate than the one that you have on your PC or that you have um, on your Xbox console. So. You know, they need. It just needs to be like wherever I am, there, there it is. I completely agree that the ubiquity of access is definitely the next big step. But you're not going to be. I'm gonna. I'm making a predictive statement here. You're never going to play Minecraft on your watch. I'm gonna say that. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Negative <laughs> Minecraft watch right now. They're not going to develop an app for your watch. Okay. Now, I want to put, put this square there. Okay. Exactly. And then that square. There. Now, <laughs> now listen, Android, you know, Samsung, LG, you know, various other companies slow play their, their wearables department. They're like, all right, we're going to do limited runs. This is only going to do so much. We understand that. Apple went all in. They went with their whole ass. Good for them. But every minute, they're not releasing sales stats. Every supplier for the hardware that went into the watch is not making their quotas for the for the quarterlies for the past three quarters the yearlies are down for everybody factories are you know are getting upset and all you can you know all of this is out there it's all common knowledge it's not likely that the wearable is going to be a viable technology I'm not saying that with any value judgment it would be, I don't care if it is or is not who gives a shit but what if if it is wouldn't it make sense that you would have a better way to access it because when it's on your, like you said, it's on your wrist, you said answer phone, you know, you get a phone call. Like, I actually had to go through a training to learn, you know, to where people were talking, or I went through a training, like I actually observed one on that people were talking about how they're positioning to sell the, the Apple Watch and none of it, none of it was really applied to what a watch can do that your phone can't or that your computer can't or that you can't it was just like, here's what the watch can do. 
So it's interesting when you think about wearables in that way. And now we're off on a topic. I know, and this is actually interesting because I know people are always asking, always making forum posts saying, "Hey, when is Corona going to support the Apple Watch?" And I think Michael and Rob and probably Brent would chime in and say, "Hey, once we actually see it as a viable platform and it's easy to develop for, then you know we'll make it there." But the the change, the difference in devices between iOS and because Apple Watch has its own iOS. Uh, has its own OS. It's not yeah. iOS on there. Yeah, so. which by the way has only you know recently been. I mean, have it have it even been fully released yet? Right. I mean, you know, right. what I'm saying app developers are still working with the the whatever V1 was, and and right. and that wasn't fully baked uh, compared to whatever V2 is going to be. Right. Right. Absolutely. So. so yeah, I, well, I, saw, I, I saw that. I'm sorry. I, I saw that the other day. Somebody said, "When when you know when is Corona going to support?" Something that you know wasn't even like officially announced yet, right? I think like like Apple TV. Is, is Corona going to support Apple TV? And I'm like, well, it's not even a product yet. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, like the SDK. I'm like, it's not even a product yet. How can it be supported? And it's not even you know, real. I mean, it's the reason it's I'm coming off kind of anti watch or anti wearable. I don't mean to sound like that. It's just that people have approached you know me with projects saying, hey, I'd really love to port this over to the watch, or I'd really like to develop something like this on the watch. Like, what do you think? And we start talking about it. It's like, well, yeah, totally. This is great, but you need to remember that you can't do this. And then you know you start talking about the things that Apple Watch isn't, and they get turned off. Yeah. Well, it, well, and and yeah, if you watch the material that Apple, like you were saying, how how it's presented, you know, it, it's about it's about glances, it's about notifications, you know, it's about those types of things, right? It's about the the, the communication of information and interacting in, in hopefully ways that we've never thought of before. But it's not about you know playing Angry Birds. It's not about like you right. said, you're not going to build a Minecraft world on your watch. You hey, you Rob? might get a, you might get a notification not letting you know that your Minecraft world is. Been updated already, but you're not. Or you I mean, I, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. You get a notification letting you know about something on your phone. You're not right, which could, your... right, right, which could be beneficial to draw you back into the game or to, or to you know, help right. you manage your day. Yeah. I don't know. I can see ways around that. Like you, you can have peripherals. If the watch becomes like the main computing device, and you have peripherals like something like Google Glass to act as like an improved screen, then I can see the watch becoming more useful. If it were a peripheral, right, yes. If it's something that is ancillary to the main device, then, if, then I'm never, you know, nobody's ever going to say that's a terrible or, like, I'm not going to get it. But, excuse me, a $350 ancillary peripheral that's completely, yeah. you know, redundant is kind of, it's a tough sell. Now, when you're talking, like I said, and I don't want to sound negative because, I mean, there are people that do use Apple Watch. Obviously, Charles likes his. People wear it and use it, and that's terrific. This when you when I, I already you know I recently I've been approached by people saying like hey I'd really love to do this on there, on the Apple Watch platform, and then they think about it for more than five seconds and they say well wait this isn't going to work at all. Now I wanted to ask Rob because he's got an interesting viewpoint being that he's also a, a photographer. I'm going to say professional because I think he does get paid. I mean I think that I think that like a, a photography like, I don't know if, like, a catalog app on a watch would be, like, a cool idea, if that would be something where, like, you could have folks get their proprietary, their their uh, lockered, you know, their secured photos available on their own watch, and they could actually cycle through them in that way and use them as watch faces. I think that would be an interesting idea. But I don't know if you've, Rob, if you've seen anything like that in the, pho- in the photography space. I mean, you know... Um Everybody's all you know sets custom backgrounds on their laptops and stuff. Right. Um, Apple really didn't give um, developers an API to do that. They've kind of kept control over that space. So you got to get the, the photo in your camera roll before you can set it as a background. Um, you know, I, users I think would like the ability to be able to set backgrounds on things. So that's a possibility. But as far from a photography perspective you generally want to see the photo, and the screen's too small for that. Yeah. I mean, particularly any photo that has any details are going to, you know, get lost in an image that small. Yeah. I always think of it like one of those, I can't, I, you know, the fact that everybody doesn't have a, uh, a digital picture frame in, like, 
every room of their house makes no sense to me because it seems like that's the most like no brainer purchase for anybody over sixty years old. It's just like here's a thousand pictures of your grandson and your granddaughter. It's gonna cycle through every five seconds. You're gonna get a new picture, and it's gonna be great. Like that's the future. That people still have physical paper in frames. I don't understand that at all. So I think in that way, I have no idea what the use of Apple Watch is and that people use it. I think that that's great because I don't understand a lot of things that people do and don't do. And I was always thinking, like, you know, I know plenty of photographers, and I was like, you know, I wonder if they could have, like, just, like, a portfolio app on the Apple Watch. And it's like, oh, people are just cycling through apps, and it's like, oh, look at Rob Miracle Photography or whatever. It's like, oh, they have interesting stuff. But then, like you were saying... That's what my iPad's for. Right. Um, right, right, right. Because, you know, particularly in the photography community, if you're trying to show your photos off, sometimes you you almost have to, you know, they're like at a distance. I mean, if if I got my phone, I got to be so close to it to see it. But the iPad, you know, is roughly an 8 by 10 photo. Uh, That's something that you can present on a wall or somebody, you know, two or three feet away from you. And, you know, if you're meeting up with a client, I'd much rather have them swipe through big photos and have to kind of scrunch into the phone um, to do that. So, so, and so the, the watch would make that even worse. So, envision this for a moment. You've got your iP- your iPad lying on the the counter. You've got your t- television, your Apple TV hooked up to your television, right? And you get a notification on your iPhone that that your pictures are ready, right? That Rob mm-hmm. has uh, uploaded them. They're ready to go. And then your options on the phone on the watch are where do you want to see it, right? And then you tap, uh, you know, the TV. And then they come up boop, on the TV, right? And everybody crowds around and looks at pictures. Or you say, "Well, you know what? Uh, I just want to look at it at the, on the iPad." So you you know you tap iPad, and they come up on the iPad. So it's that ubiquitous sort of, yes, right. you know, that 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 kind of. I think it's where handoff is 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 trying to go. Yeah, that would be a good use for the phone is to for no, like I said for notifications. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fine. Yeah, I mean, the, the one of the things I've learned about the, the watch is that it's a very intimate device, right? Like, if I put the phone in my pocket and I'm in a crowded event, I'm never going to hear it. I don't even care if I put it on a vibrate, right? It, it's just not going to – somehow it just gets lost. But, but as soon as my watch buzzes on my arm, I can feel that for sure. Uh, I mean, you know, so it has a lot of value in that, in that respect. Well, think – and I hate to keep poking holes, but if I think about it like – I agree. Sometimes my my phone is in my pocket. I don't feel it ring. I don't feel it vibe on my leg. I get those phantom vibes anyway. So, like, who knows if it's ringing or if it's not. I'll just check it like a crackhead all throughout the day. Now, my phone and my wrist, with the, which my watch is on, are approximately three inches away from each other because I've got my hand down by my leg. I'm standing there unless I'm, like, you know, boxing somebody. Usually that's where my hand is at. I'm going to start not noticing the vibration on my wrist the same way I don't notice the vibration in my leg. Or I get fi- phantom vibrations on my wrist, and then I'm going to probably jump off the Golden Gate Bridge because that would be awful. So the watch sounds great. I hope that it becomes successful. I hope that folks can develop and push to it, and I hope that I figure out what it's good for. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, like you were talking about before, is it going to be something that everybody's going to have? Mm, maybe not, right? Because not everybody's going to have, not everybody, the guy that, I don't know, the guy that works some job where it's not it's not required, maybe not. Maybe it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's it has special use cases. I don't know. I'm switching the topic here. Steven, oh, hey, before, you, before you run away from that, there's three oh. reasons I don't have one. One, it's way too expensive. Two, I wouldn't buy version one of something like that because I would plan to keep it longer than, um, you know, an every year upgrade cycle. And um, three, I don't like the idea that I have to take it off and charge it every night. So once they get better battery life, you know, I maybe charge it every couple of days and it might be a more worthwhile thing. Um, but I... I've been years without a wristwatch. Uh, the battery died in my old Timex, and I've just been living on the cell clock since. And I really, really would like to get back to having time on my wrist. Yeah. Um, and if it can do other cool things while it's at it, and it's an affordable price, yeah, I'd be all for an Apple Watch. But you know, as of right now, you know, the band I want, you know, 500 bucks just for the band. Mm, no, nah, I'll pass. 
Yeah. Well, I'll I tell you what. My, I can pull my iPhone out and look at it. In terms of battery life, um, it was, you know, from, from day one, it was, you could, you could get a full day's charge out of it, right? So you could put it on the charger, you could, in the morning you get up, you could do your stuff, and then by the end of the day, you put it back on the charger. Um, I, I loaded the, the, the original beta uh, on, on the device, and it was like, it sucked. I mean, it just like it totally blew out the battery. Um, you couldn't you couldn't go half a day, you know. And then progressively over time, it's gotten better. And this last iteration, right, like right now, it's uh, almost ten o'clock at night here, and I have seventy five percent battery. So I'm thinking you, we could get to that point where we could, you definitely, you know, day day and a half at least uh, to charge. You know, depending on your situation, right? Like if you sit at a, if you sit at a desk and you can take it off in the middle of the day, right, and put it, you know, charge it before you go home, maybe. But if you're like me, you know, I want to make sure that I don't have to charge it, right? So I'll charge it every night, regardless. Steven. I mean, if you got to charge it overnight, that's you know the time to charge it. But yeah. um, one one of the reason one of the things that I would love for them to get to the is to the point where you yeah you don't have to charge it at all, right? Because I mean not not at all, but like very rarely. But because uh, I had a not a Fitbit, but what was the other thing? Uh, anyway, I can't remember one of the fitness trackers, and it would wake me up in the morning by buzzing, and I absolutely I absolutely love that because I hate alarms. Uh, but the, but buzzing is a you know. Somehow it's just a lot less jarring. Um, so that's one of the features that I miss. I wish that you could get at that point. How do you snooze with that? I gotta have my snooze. <laughs> <laughs> my nine minutes. I'm, I'm with you. I love I love a good snooze. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you could build that in, right? You just push the button or put your hand over the watch or something. I don't know. Dude, I don't remember the last time I've been able to snooze anything. My mornings start with somebody busting the door in, the two-year-old screaming my name, and then I'm off. Yeah. I Roll out of bed, run into the wall, and I'm ready. I specifically set alarms with snoozing in mind, right? Because I'm like, I'm like that. I, w I know I won't wake up at the – you know, if it goes off, I'm not going to get up for another, at least another 15, 20 minutes, right? I need, I need the snooze cycle, so I'll go ahead and just back it up. So oh that it'll go off, and then I'll snooze until I want to actually what get kind it. of paradise are you living in, Charles? Stop talking. Uh, tell you what, Alex. One day they'll be teenagers, and then you'll have to get up to wake them up. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot <laughs> wait for that day. <laughs> like he's banging a trash can lid. Wake up! Wake it's up! Like, it's like Full Metal Jacqueline at, at Army Army. He comes in with a trash can lid and like a soup, soup spoon, just banging it right next to my ear. It's incredible. <laughs> So now I'm like army trained. I could definitely, definitely live in Iraq. I think in a hole. So I want I I wish I had more time in my day because I really want to do a desktop game jam with you guys. I know Eric won't be able to participate because he's busy with QL2. But is anybody is anybody putting anything like that together? Have you guys heard any rumbles? I know Ludlum Dare is over, but it seems like there's a there's a 12 month game dev you know, game jam cycle these days, on Twitter at least, from what I've seen. Is anybody participating in any in the upcoming days, weeks, months? I don't know, but if there's anything Corona can do to help, like, I don't know, sponsor or help out in any way, let us know. Oh my goodness gracious, listen to this guy. <laughs> You're going to be our new best friend pretty soon, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I think, the, I think the biggest part of what I understand is just, you know, organizing and managing everything, right? Because it's, it's one thing to say, hey, let's put together a game jam, but then somebody has to actually be there. What's to what's to manage? I don't... Maybe I'm crazy. It's well, just yeah, like yeah Eric can talk, talk more about that. But, well, you know, like, uh, I know when Glitch... Well, to review the application or the uh, submissions and whatnot. Yeah, they got to take in the submissions and then... Well, you know, and also if they want to actually be there as far as to, like to cheerlead during the event right cheerlead there's cheerleading during the event uh, there's ticketing the submissions there's collaborating with the judges there's announcing the winners you know and if you want to do any sort of sponsorships or something like that then you got to work with all the sponsors and stuff so i'm not like Google it, i'm just saying sponsor, that. we need to make blog posts and newsletters and whatnot yeah, yeah i think it's a great idea i'm just saying like it's yeah it, it's a, it takes time i mean i like the idea 
Yeah, me too. Uh, and yeah, we we'll talked more with Eric and uh, Laura about that because you know they did uh, Ship Jam last year, and I think that that's a great idea of shipping something bet- before the end of the year. You know, just taking dusting something off and just <coughs> getting it in the app store. Yeah, and I, I think they took a quite simple approach on participation with it, and um, so I mean, you know, it's not like the game jams where you know you're trying to bring everybody into a room together and it's all virtual with that. Um, and, you know, we can always do impromptu ones. So, I, yeah. I, I say if this is something you want to do, start it up, make a forum announcement, and start racking together some participation. Think about what you're going to give the winners, if anything other than a pat on the back. And as Jean Luc Picard would say, make it so. Did you guys see that video where uh, these two, this man and a woman, were at a uh, Star Star Trek convention, and the man was proposing to the to the wife, and they pan back, and Patrick Stewart is kind of off frame a little bit, and then he says at the end, "Engaged." Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Everybody liked that one. I thought I thought everybody had seen that one before. That's a good one. I'll probably find it some other time. But anyway, yes, impromptu game jams. I'm into it. I really want to do one just because I feel like that's the only thing that's going to get me to kick my ass and actually get something done shortly. Plus, they always are fun. I feel like I see people doing like Ludlum Dare and like other, you know, little tiny ones, and they're talking about they're trying to get this in and that in and they're trying to work on the vagaries of Unity and then, you know, using Game Maker is hard and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, I don't know why people aren't looking more at Corona. I feel like that would be perfect. Now, especially since you can deploy to desktop, I mean, that would be great. So. And for what it's worth, I got an email minutes ago from Apple. Um, my first App Store submission is in review. Ooh, for, for desktop desktop. Stuff. Cool. Oh, for desktops, okay, great. Mm-hmm. I took my oldest, worst code and <laughs> used that. <laughs> cool. So, did you did you say that was a uh, graphics 1.0 code? Yeah. Did you did you, did you get to convert it right? Did you convert it? I just did uh, graphics compatibility equals one in the config Lua. Really? Yeah. Cool. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, did it, it's all one big thing in main dot Lua? It's like. 8,000 lines of one file. Hmm. Impossible to maintain, but... Interesting. Are you going to do a blog post about that or, or, or something? Um, I did it primarily just so I could <clears throat> learn the entire workflow for submitting to the Mac store because there's, you know, tons of questions coming. How do I sign things? And, um, you know, we've been testing the builds as they come out and uh, testing the signing stuff on that. And, um you know, what's it take to actually submit one to the store? And, you know, okay, what have, what have I got that I could actually submit and actually feel good about having it up there and it actually have to be the first thing I did, so. I just, I just think that's fantastic. That's going to be the easiest port, so. That's something, that's something that's graphics 1.0. You know, you put a simple, put a line in there that says, you know, compatibility, and then, bam, you get desktop. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I had to take Game Center stuff out and... Oh, right. uh, let's see. That that one wasn't running ads because it was a for sale game. Um, I don't have any IAPs in it to deal with. Um, so I literally think all, all I had to do was rip out the uh, game center code, and that was just a matter of coming out one line that starts the login process when it first logged in. So you know, it wasn't too bad. So was this a paid app or a free one? It was a paid. It'd be paid. Cool. I'm excited to see what uh, what Fire Maple Games. Comes out yeah, with. I already walked in here. We got another Corona employee here. The okay, there we go. Right at the <laughs> end. <laughs> we need to come in oh, at the I didn't know you were just time. about to finish. I was just curious to jump in. <laughs> you got to come in at the beginning next our time. Our Android guy. He just released a uh, Facebook three B four stuff. Pretty cool. Yep. Sweet. Fun stuff there. You guys should try it out if you haven't already. Get into it. For sure. Next week we should definitely talk more about that. For sure. <laughs> well, hey, it is, is it, ten o'clock. Yes, this is about when we wrap up. <laughs> yeah, so I think we should we should wrap it up. We got lots of great topics. I, actually, I I did something I don't normally do is I actually wrote down times and and 
reminders as to what we talked about. So I'll show notes. This. <laughs> yeah, man. So well, I usually c collect all the links together and you know count that as show notes. But this time I'll actually try to um, publish the links, but also split up the the video into like you know legible topics. Charles is gonna do up our set list right now. We're going on the road with this. That's all right. That's Sorry, right. Well, you know, well, I definitely got to get the uh, the boiled chicken cutlet story out there because that was. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was slightly absent from some of the conversations tonight, but I was actually working on the screenshot Saturday app while I was doing this. I saw it. I saw so, you sharing, Jason. It looked a little good. bit, yeah. And it's it's you know it's getting there. And I, I uh, some of you guys know I, I you were talking last week about how I have a habit of buying domain names to force myself. <laughs> so I did. I go to screenshotsaturdayapp.com. I saw that, saw that on, uh, on Twitter. Oh, not that. And you also put up a donation button, Jason. Oh, okay. Everybody loves to throw coins at you. <laughs> Dance. And Kevin and Kevin has promised through through a couple of coins, so it was his suggestion, and then uh, I thank him for it. He's a good dude. I wonder where he's at right now. Probably so sleeping. Far. He's in the UK. It's like four in the morning over there. He did was not was, drinking the last time. Did you say it was Screenshot Saturday? ScreenshotSaturdayApp.com. ScreenshotSaturday.com is 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 taken. Yeah. Yeah. App. The official one. Screenshot you can you can take a glimpse at my uh, working icon there. So we'll see if that sticks. Nice. I like it. Well, Where there you go. go. All right. Well, we'll leave it there then. ScreenshotSaturdayApp.com. Go check it out. And uh, awesome. yeah, definitely throw throw Jason some bones because. Uh, you know, the next, the very next day after we razzed him so much, he put a button on his uh, on his site so people could, you know, show their love. Throw him some ducats. Yeah, that's right. I got, I got a little love for which I am very grateful. It's old school slang right there. Ducats. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going. All right. It's been fun. Peace out, fools. Yeah, man. Have a great week. Good week. Adios. All right.